Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. I have compiled a whole ton of spring and Easter DIYs for you all in one video for you to enjoy. We're going to be making a wreath so I'm going to be starting with this. I'm also going to be making use of these socks here. So usually when I make wreaths like this I have to sit there winding something around the whole wreath. Today I wanted to try something a little different, a little easier so just bear with me, this is all in my head, hopefully it works out. I know you're wondering what the heck are you doing? But you're going to cut your wreath like this so that we can slide these sacks over it and we will glue it all back together. So you can take your sacks and just cut this little bit off where the toes are. I think I want the grey bit up so I'm just going to dress the wreath basically. And that's a lot quicker, anything to save time, than my usual way of making wreaths. It's pretty cute. And then we're going to do the same with the other half. Slip that over. And then what you want to do is take your glue and roll your suck up just a little like this so you can apply the glue on there because it doesn't work very well on the styrofoam. So just all on there, just at the back a little and then you're going to turn that back. So it sticks onto the wreath. And then we're going to do that with this as well. Be very careful of your fingers. Now I'm going to just put this apart a little and add the glue inside. To stick that back in and press it together. Then we're going to roll this over just as we did at the bottom of the wreath and add the glue all around. Next we're going to be creating a fence. So these are the only six that I have got. I probably would have preferred the natural shade but thankfully I do have grey in my wreath so it can kind of match. So we're going to arrange them like this. We're going to stick them at the back of the wreath using whatever glue you want. I'm always using hot glue. So flip this around. Let's add the glue. I'm going to switch it back this way. So I can kind of see what I'm doing and where I like it. So the first one's going to go down like that. And we're just going to keep going, adding our glue. Say about a quarter of the stick. Have a look where you'd like your next one. And press it down. Onto the third one here. Just trying to make sure that they're aligned and that there's kind of a similar gap in between each one. So I have four sticks in total. Now we're going to give it some stability because they are a little bit flimsy, like this one there especially. So we're going to take one and add it 
right here like this. So these are going to glue on this, you'll see now. So you're going to add some glue on all of the sticks, just a drop like this. And then take the other stick, slide it in front. And then you want to place it on top of the hot glue bits. So let's stick that down, making sure that we are happy with the placement. So once you've got your sticks all stuck together, we're going to have this bit here and this bit here stuck down to the wreath. So take your glue and add it to either side of the sticks, but I'm actually going to stick this one down first. So I don't want it to lose the stickiness. Okay, and I'm going to add it to this side here. Kind of a little bit hard to see, but you know what I'm doing. And then take one final stick, and we're going to stick this one on the back like this. It just gives it stability, but it also looks a lot nicer. So I'm going to flip this around and add some glue on all of the sticks again. And then secure it in place. I'm taking this pre-made bow, this was actually on the socks that I'm using, and I'm going to add that right in the center. Don't usually use silver, but I'm using it a lot today in gray. Now we're going to be adding some colourful carrots to the wreath. So I've got mine here. So taking your hot glue, you're going to stick them down. I always love these miniature carrots, can't get enough of them. So this one's lying down on the side. I'm going to add one more to the side there. And then a third, I think, here, let's see, yep. I think I'm going to use the entire pack, it's a pack of six, so I'm going to add some to this side as well. And then a third one, final one, ran out of my glue stick. Alright, and now you all know what this wreath is missing the bunny rabbit. So I'm going to be using a sock again. I actually need to get more of these I think. And what you're going to do is cut your sock. I've never made a bunny like this but I'm excited to do it for this project. Hopefully that's enough. Let's have a look. So I was actually going to use toy stuffing or cushion stuffing for the bunny but I think I'm going to just roll the sock in a few times and that's giving it enough. So that looks like the, the back of the bunny and that's exactly what we want. I'm just going to add some glue to make sure that this is all stuck in place. And then let's see, we want it to go right here in the middle. Make sure you kind of shape it so that it still looks like a bunny. This is a greedy bunny stealing the carrots. We're going to add his tail and make little feet as well. And then add some glue on the outside. Wedge that in the middle and stick that to the fence. So taking a white pom-pom and you can use a pink one. Shall we use a pink one? I think I'll stick with the white. So just taking my hot glue, adding that to his little butt. And now we're going to move on to making the feet. So I'm taking the same sock. I'm just cutting an amount off there. And I'm going to cut this in half. It keeps getting stuck. Let's have a look at that. 
that seems to be perfect. So I'm going to take my glue. Wrap this around a few times. And then one last time. So this is one foot done. I'm just going to secure that down with the hot glue and then we'll move on to making the other foot. So we're just doing the same process with this strip here. Adding the hot glue and then rolling it. So I'm just sticking down the other foot here. Now we need to finalise adding the details on his feet. So let me take my little scissors. to make some circles. You're going to need a larger circle first. Let's see if that's a good size. So grabbing my pencil, you're going to draw along it so that you can have identical feet. <laughs> now it's really starting to look like a bunny. So I had to cut them smaller because I forgot to do the three little circles. So we need to cut those as well. They're going to be really, really tiny. That's perfect. So again, draw along these and you're going to need six in total. You need to cut them out and stick them on. This project took a little longer than usual, but imagine if I had to wrap something around the wreath. I'm so glad that I found a quicker way to do that. And I think it's come out really cute. It's bright. I, I kind of tend to go for more neutral colours, but this was a nice difference. So far I've been using items from the pound shop, so for the second project, I've got this which was part, I think from plants I got from Ikea and I'm going to be using a styrofoam. So you're going to push the styrofoam inside. Then you're going to take some moss. Again, this is from Poundland. Now I added some curly moss on top and then you're going to take these straws in the party section, place it in the foam. So you want it in the middle. And they do have different colors. You can choose whatever color you want. You can cut this out using your Cricut, but I didn't even though I have a Cricut, I barely use it to be honest. I brought these from the works and they also had eggs in them. So I'm going to stick the bunny on the straw. I think I'm going to cut the straw a little. I'm also going to add a small bow to the neck of the bunny right here. I'm taking some lace just to decorate the planter and I'm going to just hot glue that just at the ends. And these kind of things always look nicer in a set of three. So let's stick the bunny onto the straw. You can make this more sturdy because it's quite thin. You can add cardboard if you like. So let's cut the straw now. Let's see how much I want. Add the glue to the straw, making sure it's in the center. This one was really nice, simple and easy and you can add like chicks or eggs, not just rabbits at the top. This is kind of like cottage core vibes, also farmhouse I suppose. For the final project today I'm going to be using one of these, I always find them super cute. And the pipe cleaners I'm using silver and I'm also going to be using some wire tinsel. So what I'm going to do with the tinsel is add it to the edges. I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so now we're going to cut this. We're going to add the handle to make a cute little basket. Cut it the size that you want. I think that's perfect. So then you take your hot glue add it to either side and stick it down. Next you're going to take some decorative grass. You can use the shredded coloured paper if you like. I just really like the neutrals. This was from Home Bargains so I'm going to add a little bit inside my little tin. Grab a bunch and let's cut it here. Once I've got it 
into kind of a bit of a shape I'm taking my scissors to cut a bit of the loose bits then you place it inside then I'm taking a nest again from Home Bargains and taking some flower heads I'm going to glue them to the nest just to give it a little more detail and make it look pretty and kind of spring as well so I've got three different colours here we're going to take our pretty nest add some glue to the bottom and stick it inside I'm taking my dotting tool and a tester part of paint and I'm going to be making a few little dots as I tend to do on the styrofoam eggs now to finalize I'm going to be using this little printout here I'm going to leave it in the description box if I forget just let me know in the comments and I'll pop it there for you it's actually A4 but I have shrunk them down just for this project so yeah it's going to be free and it's there for you to print so I think I'm going to go with the smallest one I made a few sizes here just in case I think the smallest one or this one here might do so I'm going to cut it and add it to some card <laughs> Need a new one. Just placing that on the card. So I went for the smaller size here, and I'm going to just hot glue that right here on the edge of the nest. So this project is probably more to my style. I love mixing shabby chic and vintage. Plus it's miniature, it's sweet and cute. I really love this one. So I'm going to be starting with making a wreath and I'm going to make it really differently. I'm taking a set of paper plates. This was from Morrison's and I'm going to be using this as my main wreath form. Just look at how beautiful the design is already. So we don't want it looking like a paper plate obviously. So I'm going to start decorating around here. And to do that we're going to be using moss. So this is my collection here. So grab your glue gun. You can see I use moss a lot. I've got moss stuck to the glue gun itself. And we're going to be adding glue and moss as we go. Starting just at the bottom here. want to make sure it's all covered so I am adding quite a bit of glue there let's get the moss ready like this and we're just going to start gluing it you might see a little soil falling <laughs> that's because some soil is still attached any little space I'm adding more hot glue and just making sure that the sides are nice and covered so we can't see any of the plate I've got my artificial flowers now and we're going to start sticking them down I did finish covering the plate with the moss as you can see so I'll just taking my glue again I've taken a few different sprigs of my artificial flower collection so I'm starting on the side with these white ones And then I think I'm going to go with the yellow, nice and bright. Just overlapping the white flowers a little there. I snipped off some lavender. And again, just taking my glue and overlapping the last yellow flower there. Taking a smaller one, so I'm just layering really. I'm adding same yellow one I'm going to start adding some flowers at the bottom and this is actually a paper one so this is a sunflower I thought it's just going to add that touch of colour I haven't quite figured what I want at the bottom or the top so I'm just going to carry on working on this side and I'm going to try to mirror this side I'm not actually sure if I've got all the flowers but we'll have a look so I'm taking the white ones first I've actually run out of this yellow flower here so we're only going to be able to place one 
Let me just lift that a little, just trying to make sure it's kind of similar to the other side there. Let's add the lavender. I've got plenty of the lavender. So at the bottom here we're going to be overlapping the flowers. These are the paper ones. It's going to go something like this. I'm going to be taking one of these butterfly wall stickers and I always give them a little bend. This has been used for another project so it's not too sticky now. So I'm just taking a drop of hot glue in the middle there and let's add that right here to the side of the wreath. I'm taking these tiny really cute bees. These are toppers so I'm just going to add the glue right there. Gosh they're tiny so you have to be careful with your fingers and I'm going to glue one there and one up here and I think we're going to finish off with a bow at the top. Guys these flowers here aren't doing it for me I don't know why. <laughs> So this is what happens. I mean, I was debating off camera for the longest time, but yeah, gonna have to remove them and figure out what flowers I want there instead. I think it's the small dainty ones that do it for me. <laughs> so I even tried with these, but we're gonna stick with these and I'm gonna need quite a few. So I need to buy some more. Again, I'm going to be overlapping them, so kind of like this. This one's lost a petal, don't know where. Now, taking this bow, this is a pre-made bow. I got it from Zadil, I'll leave it in the description box. Um, and I'm going to just glue that on the top and then we're done. So this is a final project and now you can see that my intro poem really matches the whole theme here and I'm just so happy with this, like who would know that I made this using a paper plate? I love the background. For the next DIY, this is going to be pretty quick. We're going to be taking some tumble tower blocks, four in total, and we're going to stick them together using our hot glue. I'm also going to be taking some more paper plates, and these are again bee themed from Home Bargains. So let's start with gluing these together. Just like to remove the glue and you do want to do that because you want it nice and flat and smooth so again so we've got our full blocks ready then you want to place it on top of this section here, let me just get a pencil and you're going to draw along it and now you know how much to cut so grab your scissors if you don't want to use a paper plate or you don't have one you can just print something similar off the internet just going to glue that on. You can use this for a tear tray as well just to decorate it because it's a miniature. Now the next step is taking some moss again and we're going to just decorate the top of the tumble tower. So I'm going to get my hot glue ready and stick a few bits of moss on. This is optional, don't really think you need to do it, especially if you're making this for a tiered tray. Just removing a little bit of the soil that's on the moss here. I'm going to be adding some flowers to the top, the same ones that I used in the first project. So sometimes you need to like cut, cut them down a little bit because they stick up a bit too much. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to have this one coming down right here. 
I think I'm just going to go with two. And then to finish it off, you can just leave it like this. But I have this gorgeous brooch or brooch, however you like to say it. This was off the deal as well. I'm going to add that, I think, around about here. Yeah, not on top. You can't see that that well. So I think I'm going to just stick him down here and we're done with this gorgeous little DIY. Quick and easy, but honestly, this one might be my favourite. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For the next project, you're going to be taking a champagne flute. These are from Poundland. And you're going to take the top half. And what you want to do is get rid of this part here. So I have this tool that I'm going to be using. I've attached the blade to the top there. And I'm just going to wait for it to get a little bit hot. And then I'll be able to cut through the plastic. So you can see now it's getting hot. And it's just cutting away at the plastic. This is a really handy tool and it was pretty cheap as well. So there we have it and then you can sand this up to make it nice and smooth. Next you're going to grab a cardboard, take a pencil and you want to draw along your champagne flute. Now you want to take your scissors and cut that out. Once you have your circle, what you want to do is stick that down again using whatever glue you like. Then you're going to take the bottom of your champagne flute, add some glue. Then you want to stick it in the center. And how cute is that? I've literally just made a cloche so you can put things inside before you glue it down if you want. And you know, you can change this up for seasons and holidays, but we're actually going to turn this into a bee skep as you've seen from the thumbnail. Now we're going to be taking a placemat and this one is from Poundland as well, but if you don't have this, you can use just some string, some jute twine. So I'm taking it apart as you can see, just gently pull at it and it just comes away very easily. So you're going to take your hot glue and apply it right at the bottom and then take this piece and attach it and we're just going to keep winding this around. So I'm going to fast forward this and play some music. When you get to the top you're going to have the hole and it's up to you how you want to fill it. You can put it like this or you can carry on winding it around until you fill the hole. You kind of have to stick it one little bit at a time and I'm going to need to burn all of this off once I'm done with this. How cute is it? I'm really loving it. So off camera I just went and cut off all of the like excess little strands and I also went over it with a bit of fire. So now we're going to make the little hole and I tend to do it like quite kind of a big circle I'd say but I'm going for a smaller one this time because this is actually already pretty small and also realistically they are they tend to be very small holes. So I'm just taking a sharpie here going over a little section so this is kind of what they really look like but I feel like that's a bit small so I don't know if I should go for one bigger one so I have gone with another one in the end and you can make yours a circle I tend to but I just really want to go for kind of like a natural looking one this time I think I'm happy with this we're going to take one of these cuties again run out <laughs> and you can remove these but I don't mind them um, the little sticky foam pads let 
Let's have one going down this way. I got these off eBay by the way. And perhaps another here. So I've added a third bee here and then I'm taking the small flowers again and I'm going to stick them down to the base here. And I'm going to have three I think. And then we will finish off with this little step. So here's our final project from today. I really hope that you have enjoyed watching. Please make sure you subscribe. So for the first project, I'm actually going to be starting with some thrift finds. So I've got this basket here. I've always loved wicker. And we're going to actually turn this into a wagon. So it doesn't look like much now, but we're going to be adding these knobs, which again, I have thrifted and you can see they're not very clean. So we're going to start off by giving them a clean. So I did try to go ahead and wash them, but nothing came off really. Just a bit of dirt, but the main things didn't come off. But anyhow, we're going to be covering them. So I'm not too bothered. I'm going to start with the wheels and I'm taking some material to cover them. So I've got this one here and we're going to cut its size and glue it onto the knobs like this. So I'm going to cut off the excess material here. And I'm actually going to place my hot glue here because if I do it here, the glue will just show through the material because the material is quite thin. And this area here will be quite hidden under the wicker basket. So let's grab that, place it in the middle. We're just going to glue it down and then you can cut off the excess material that you have. I'm just going to get rid of all of this and then we're going to stick it down again. It looks a little bit like a ghost right now. So you're going to do that with all three nubs, well four nubs including the one we've made already. So I'm not going to repeat that just so I don't bore you all. But I'm also going to go a step further and I'm taking this which I've also found in the thrift store. I'm going to go over the wheels. Let me just cut this off first. Because I don't want this added material. So you can use some rope, jute, anything that you like. I'm going to stick this onto the wheels creating a circle so we're just creating like a border I'd say so go around your knob add in hot glue then we're going to take this and stick it on and then once you stick it down to the bottom this is how it's going to look. You can see that it's really already coming to life now looking more like a wagon I'm taking these brass fasteners and I've taken the longer bits off using my pliers so that I've just got the round bits I'm sticking them onto the centre of the wheels. So I'm going to do that for the other three. I'm bringing back my wicker basket and I'm taking this which is now rope and I'm going to be adding it all on the sides of the wicker basket. So just again giving it a border to match the wheels. I'm sticking that down with my hot glue. And because hot glue dries really quick, I'm just going to stick little bits at a time. I've already measured the rope to the size of the wicker basket and I've cut that. Once you've got your wicker and your wheels, we're going to stick them down so we can finally get the wagon together. So I've stuck two wheels, I've got two to go. And now you're going to take some chopsticks. <laughs> These are going to be the handles of our wagon. So we're going to glue them either side. I'm going to get right under the rope. And I've glued the pointy chopsticks this way because this looked more like handles. I liked the little bit of detail there. So that's nice and stuck down. We'll do the same match it on this side. I'm taking some neutral ribbon. This is actually the part from this rope and I'm going to cover the wood just so you know kind of looks a little bit better anyway in my opinion. So I'm going to cut that. Well I've already cut it 
but I'm going to stick it down with my hot glue. And then I'm adding a little material on this end. Need to trim it a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same on the other chopsticks. I'm placing this netting inside and I'm just covering the wicker. I haven't stuck this down. Then we're going to be taking some rabbits. These are the ones that I'm using and I'm going to remove the eyes. going to add three of those in. Next you're going to be adding moss and flowers and carrots and that's how we are going to finish this project. So this is moss that I have collected from my garden and the park. So now I'm taking the carrots and these carrots actually come with a string so I'm just going to cut that off because I won't need it. And you're just going to add that in as if it's in the ground. You can add as many carrots as you like. And now I'm taking these flower heads. They are so beautiful for spring as well. And we're going to add some colour. Just adding them into the moss again. I'm adding some subtle colour in the ears using some old makeup. So I'm taking a pink eyeshadow here. I'm just taking my finger to do this ever so lightly. I'm also going to give them noses and eyes, just taking some makeup again to do this, a darker shade here. Now this project did take me a while to make, but it's definitely one of my most favourite things because it's just really unique and creative and I love bringing my ideas to life from my mind. I most certainly did not think of making this cute little Easter wagon when I picked up the wicker basket from the thrift store, but I'm definitely happy with how it came out. For the next project, I'm going to be using this paper mache egg and you're going to need a lid as well. We're going to glue that on the lid in the centre. Then I'm taking my white acrylic gesso. We're going to give this a coat of paint. This is all nice and dry now, so you're going to be taking your glue and we're going to add moss at the bottom covering all of the lid there. So it doesn't matter that you can still see the lid because that will be all covered anyway. And this is just natural moss again. So it does have soil with it and you can just kind of crumble that off a little bit but I don't mind it. I like that it looks quite natural. So taking my glue and I'm going to do this all around just to ensure that it's all covered. Look at how lovely and natural that actually looks now. And I'm going to just dollop some hot glue in the egg inside. Quite a generous amount there. And again, we're going to cover the base with, you guessed it, more moss. I've taken some flowers off. A big branch that I had so you can just pull them off quite easily and we're going to stick that on the side of the egg like this and I'm just using my hot glue again to do that. So I've glued these three and then I'm taking a smaller snippet and adding that to the opening of the egg on the side. I've gone ahead and stuck down three flowers in different colours as you can see. They are the flowers that I used earlier so they're just like flower heads. And now I'm going to finish up the project by taking these tiny little rabbits. They're actually like little pom-poms and I got them in a set of six. I'm going to use two to place inside. So again securing them down with my glue. This one's going to be standing up and the one inside is sitting down. This one's going to be at the entrance. How adorable is this project? I'm honestly grinning from ear to ear. I really find this super sweet. I thought that the wagon was my favourite, but I'm really having a hard time deciding on today's projects. For the third and final project for today, I'm going to be using this as a stand. This was from another project. It was actually a 
insect house I think yeah that's what it was so yeah I'm going to use that as the platform and then I'm taking some wooden embellishments I've got a rabbit I have an egg and I have a small butterfly so these are what I'm going to be using this I've already colored off camera with one of these um, Arteza markers so I'm going to be taking the pink one here this is actually magenta give it a shake I haven't used this one yet and I'm gonna use this to color the butterfly so my butterfly is nice and dry now it's actually got an ombre effect um, now I'm gonna take my egg embellishment and I'm taking a stamp to decorate this so I'm going to leave it just as it is I haven't colored it in or painted it and I'm gonna use I think the middle section of my stamp here so I'm going to check what colour I want, which I'm still undecided. I think I'm going to go with a blue, so I'll try the light blue first. I'm not sure if it's going to pick up. If not, I've got backup blue here, which is a bit darker. So I'm going to flip my stamp around and I'm going to add the ink to it. Taking my wooden embellishment and my stamp and placing that on there and then I'm just going to press it. Let's remove that and hopefully it's come through. So that's how it is. I'm not too disappointed. It's not as sharp as I wanted, but I think it will still do. So I'm going to take my hot glue and we're going to start gluing these in place. I'm going to have the egg at the back here. I'm going to keep this as is because I really do love wood. And I'm going to just decorate it a little instead of painting it. I'm taking this ribbon which is actually a washi tape so I'm not going to need to stick it on it's all sticky I'm going to just remove the backing peels away like that and then just centering it going all the way around and then finishing off with this pre-made bow it's got a lovely pearl in the middle as well I'm just going to add a little to the egg taking the gold ink and I'm going over the edges so it can kind of highlight a little bit small touch but really adds a lot so I'm going to secure that down now taking the hot glue and we're going to stick that on the back on the butterfly I'm going to take this script stencil and I'm taking this tool here with something called modeling paste if you're new to this you just take a small amount and you use this to go over the stencil so let's place that on there make sure the butterfly is covered with this 3D paste once you remove the stencil you're going to have a nice script and it's really 3D which I love so let's take our rabbit and glue him down just on the bottom now you're going to take a thin piece of wire and I'm going to just twirl it a little bit so you can place your finger in and twirl it Let's see how much we want. I think I'm going to have it around about there. So you're going to take your pliers and you can cut off the rest of your wire. Take your wire and add some glue to it. And then you're going to take your butterfly and stick it on. We're going to add a touch of hot glue on the bottom. then attach it to the base and this is our final project for today you know I never really stick to one style like farmhouse only I tend to make projects that mix everything together and that typically tends to be a bit of shabby chic a bit of rustic a bit of vintage mixed in with some whimsy so today I'm going to be giving a makeover to three thrift finds so the first one i have painted it off camera already this is a salt pig and it was white 
so I'll leave the photo of what it looked like here. I have painted it bronze, I've given it two coats of paint here and I am going to be transforming this into like a bee skep, a beehive and I know that this is a really large entrance and usually beehives have very small little holes but I kind of wanted this to be as though we as humans are getting an insight into the world inside like of a beehive. So that's what I'm going with, it's kind of like a diorama. So I painted it and the second thing that I want to do is to be taking some of this packaging. So we're going to also be doing trash to treasure here. So I thought that this really looked like honeycombs when you stretch it out. And that's why I saved it and finally we're going to get to use it for today's project. One of the things I want to do first for the inside, you can paint it but I think that's going to be a little bit difficult unless you're going to be using spray paint. So I'm just going to take some of this, it's kind of like um, tissue paper but it's not organza maybe. So I'm going to just rip it, does it have to be neat? And I'm going to scrunch it up a little. And I'm just going to place it inside. Just making sure that I cover any white areas. Because when we look in, we don't want to see any of the white. You can also do this like in an orange colour to kind of represent the honey. And you can stick that in place, but I'm just going to leave mine like this. Next, you kind of want to measure out how much you want from this packaging. So then you're going to cut it and we're going to stick it inside. It is going to be a little bit tricky. I didn't want it outside like this. I kind of want it to be inside. So I'm just roughly cutting around it. And you want it a little bit bigger than the actual entrance because we need something to stick it by. And then I think I could kind of do the rest without holding that. Let's set that aside and just get these holes opened a little bit better. When you're doing this just make sure you don't pull it too hard because you don't want to break it or to rip it rather. You kind of want all of the holes there otherwise it won't look that realistic. So I was just sitting here thinking that the adhesive is a little bit tricky because we're going to be working with the inside and also you have to kind of make sure it's really nice and taut for it to have the effect of the honeycombs. So I thought with the hot glue it's just going to burn me, it's just going to be getting cold and you know I'm going to have to work under time pressure. So what I'm actually going to do is use double sided tape. So here's my tape, I'm just going to rip a little and I'm going to add it to the sides. And you just want to do that all around. Take the backing off. That's one done. So as you can see I've got all my tape here now. And this is going to be the trickiest part of this project. Trying to get this in, stick it inside and making sure it's really nice and taut. So I think I'm about done now and I am going to add some rope right on the entrance like this. So we're going to glue that all around using our hot glue and just cut its size. So just snipping off the excess here and then we'll just stick that down. So off camera I just took some acrylic paint, this is yellow, and then I also took a gold and I mixed it up to get a really nice honey colour. I then applied the honey inside here just to make it look more like honeycombs. So as you can see I've got some lines that I've drawn here and that's just with some soft pastels. I've got three colours here and I just want to give it some definition and just make it look more like a beehive or a bee skep. So I'm going to carry on drawing around. I've got one half done so I kind of just need to match where I've drawn those lines here. And 
and then I'm going to connect them at the back as well and this doesn't have to be really neat because you're kind of going to blend it in anyway So I'm going in with my second one here and then take your yellow kind of add that in the middle looks like a right mess right now but it's going to blend in nicely and then the fun part Start blending in. Now I'm going to be taking my hot glue and this has like a honey coloured glue stick if you can see there and I'm going to start drizzling that right here at the entrance and I'm going to try to bring it down a little as well so it actually looks like it's stripping. Another alternative is just to use normal hot glue and then just paint it into a nice honey colour. I've also put some in the jar itself and then I'm going over the honeycomb a little just to kind of make it look more realistic here. So it really will look like a honeycomb. Kind of gives it like that wet look. Be very careful though when you do this because obviously it's like paper, packaging paper. And I'm going to finish off by sticking the B as the final touch. This is actually a brooch. Um, I'm going to just stick him here with some hot glue and then I think we're done with this project. Just to finish off I'm going to add a little bit of greenery and I was really debating whether I should do this or not. but because I have two other projects in mind I just really wanted to kind of fit in so that's why I went with adding it in the end so I'm taking these leaves and I'm also going to add this purple flower pink and lilac right there and I'm just going to do that with hot glue and then we're done so just to remind you we went from this to this I really think this is so cute and it's really really unique. You all know me by now, I'm sure you can guess that this is something that I have made and if you're new to my channel I really love making unique things that are kind of whimsy as well. And we hit two birds with one stone here, we did a thrift flip or a thrift makeover and a trash to treasure project. So we're moving on to the second project now and these are my thrift finds. So what do you think we'll create with these? I've got a teacup, I've got a saucer, well you can actually know from the thumbnail and I've got a sweets jar and we're gonna turn this into a teacup gnome. The first thing you're going to do is stick your sweets jar and you don't have to use a jar like this, I'm just simply using all I've got but you want something that you can use as the body of the gnome. And then you're going to take some hot glue and you're not going to stick it right in the centre. You want to stick it a little bit further away and that's because we're going to have some feet for the gnome. So I'm going to take my glue, right, I'm going to add it on the bottom here. I've still got the honey colour from the first project. Some of the glue is still coming through. And you can secure the sound with E6000 as well or some super glue. The next thing you want to do is take your teacup and place it on top. So if you are using a jar, you want to make sure that the teacup can actually go on there nicely. You also want to find something that isn't too short, isn't too long, isn't too wide. Because you have to remember this is actually the body of the gnome. So just imagine that. I know it's just a jar at the moment. Let's have a look at where we need the glue to go on the outer sides of this jar I think that should be enough I'm going to stick that right on hold it for a while for the gnome's feet 
or shoes rather I'm taking some tiny dog shoes now you can find key rings on Amazon like shoe key rings and those work perfectly they're better than these and I'm just going to remove this so I'm going to grab my scissors and cut this off just so it's easy to work with and obviously we don't need these on there either so I'm grabbing my gold acrylic paint I'm just going to go and paint these so I'm going to go ahead and just do both of these and then we'll move on to the next stage my little beads have dried and I've also placed them where I will think I would like them and because I've done that I'm just making sure that I hold it down I'm taking my hot glue just to glue them down so when it comes to making the beard make sure that you cut the beard the way that the fluff or the fur is going down because if you stick it on like that this is actually going up so I'm going to kind of measure roughly how much I want to cut and then I'm just going to cut a small triangle and we're going to stick it on to the jar so now I need to just trim my beard to size downwards into a triangle I'm happy with how long it is here on the sides but I just need to tidy him up a little so when you're happy go ahead and stick that down and for the nose you can take anything you like you can even make it out of plasticine or polymer clay this is a bead I always use the beads and I'm gonna stick that down right here under the cup I wish I didn't have the ones with holes in but that's the only ones that I've got right now how cute is he looking so far now I'm gonna add a flower I was thinking this one but my hobby decided but this one actually looks better so I'll go with his opinion even though I think it's this one that looks better <laughs> I think our little gnome needs some arms this is optional you don't have to do it but yeah I just felt like he is missing them so I've got some material here this is actually just a scarf I also have some pipe cleaners and this is how I'm going to make his hands so you're going to have two pipe cleaners and I have just folded it like this in half and then once again and then just twist them at the ends so it doesn't open up this is also going to ensure that your arms can actually be moved because it's all wired and take your material, mine's really bright and yellow just to match the sunflower and we're going to wrap it around make sure you can't see the pipe cleaner so you might have to do this several times until you're happy and then I'm just going to take my hot glue be careful with your fingers secure that and then we'll cut that so this is one arm done almost I'm going to add a little bead as his hand so taking my glue again I'm just going to put that through okay let's move on to making the next one same process obviously so there we have it, two little arms made. Now we're going to attach it onto the sides of our jar. We're going to apply a touch of colour to his nose and the way that I like to do this is by taking some old makeup and just gently brushing it on his nose. So you can do noses, different colours, you don't have to go the wooden bead alone. This just adds a little subtle colour, giving him a kind of a brown, bronzy nose to match the shoes as well. And I'm going to add two little dots or three using my dotting tool and some paint. 
don't need much at all. This is the side that I'm going to use. So I'm just stabbing it here. Now I'm going to start decorating around the saucer a little. To do that, I'm going to be taking some moss and I'm going to just take my hot glue had quite a good amount there. We're just going to place some moss in the corner. And I'm going to add more hot glue on top of the moss and a little on his arm because I'm going to be adding two flowers on there. I'm taking this arrangement that I put together in a previous project and I'm also going to stick that on the side. I suddenly had this idea come to me and I just think it's so adorable that I have to do it. I'm going to use this part of the teacup as though it's a bird bath. So I'm going to be applying some UV resin to it and then I'm going to cure it. So I've got some pigment there. This is blue powdered pigment. And then I'm taking my resin. Oh, whoops. Wrong thing there. And I'm going to mix that in to create water. Got my toothpick. It's a nice little technique here if you haven't seen this before. Let's mix that in. And then let's take these two chicks. So let's just plop him inside and this one. And then we're going to cure it. And this is UV light. And you're just going to place your UV light on top of your resin for around two to three minutes. Look at what I'm doing. I'm using the arm to hold it while I can clean a table as it cures. So this is nice and cure now. As you can see it's not tacky, it's all dried solid. And then I'm going to be taking this paper plate. I have just used it in a previous project. I'm going to take the bee and happy. Let's just cut that out. We're going to be creating like a sign using that. So just taking my scissors and cutting around. Attach some hot glue to the card. You just need a trap. And we're going to stick that to the straw. So that's our B. And then happy. Let's see how we want that to be. I've taken a very long time on this little Nomi. He's well worth it, I think, though. So I've just got this side left and hopefully I think I'll be done then. So what I'm going to do is just take some moss and these are flowers I've actually stuck on moss um, in a previous project and I'm just getting to reuse them now. But I think I might need a little bit more moss before we place those down. So I'm going to take my hot glue and just glue a little bit on the side here. I'm actually not really a known person but when I make them, I actually like the gnomes that I make. It's kind of a bit funny, but I really do like this little guy. Right, so these are the small flowers. I actually got them on Amazon and they were from China, but they were very, very cheap. And I quite like them because they're dainty and they're pretty. And I like everything that's quite small. <laughs> and if you know me by now, you know, I really love making miniatures and teacups and very like whimsical, magical things. And if you are new to my channel, then I would love if you can click that subscribe button. Now I've cut the straw down to a size I'm happy with. And I also placed a bee on the top. And I'm going to attach the straw to the side here with my hot glue. I thought I was finished, but my brain threw another idea at me. So I'm taking one of these little miniature um, jars 
and I'm going to fill it with fake honey like I did on my first project so I'm just getting my hot glue ready and I have this beautiful ribbon that I found actually in the thrift store and I really really love it because it looks like it's been printed on and I think I'm going to go with this one here so I'm going to cut that off let's start around about here and we're going to glue this on we're going to stick that on like, like it's a label almost look at how beautiful that looks already and we're going to put some honey in there's my honey coloured hot glue I'm not going to go all the way we've just got enough you can see there, look at that I'm going to glue that right in there so I want him to hold the jar now so I'm going to just apply the glue oh that's the honey colours glue still oh well and then we have to get his other hand on there as well I've added a little bee to the sunflower and they've got like let me just show you they have printed wings and they're white and they're flat let me get one out so I'm not really happy with them so what I've done is I've added a little hot glue and it's really made quite a difference there I've even peeled it up very very slightly so that it kind of looks more like wings so that's a little tip if you do use these and these are from Amazon they usually come in a pack and I have used a lot again very cheap because they come from China so we went from this teacup and saucer set which I think were actually really beautiful to begin with to this cutie pie he is a labour of love that's all I can say I don't think I've ever spent so long working on a gnome and obviously we edit the video down so it was a lot longer than it actually looks but I really love him he's definitely my favourite gnome I've ever made so for our last thrift makeover I'm taking this white jug and even though it is white it kind of has like a greyish tint to it and I just really wanted to give it a fresh coat of paint I mean this isn't painted so I am starting over here and sometimes I find that applying paint to surfaces that are really smooth like this just doesn't work very well with a typical paintbrush so that's why I'm taking this sponge brush and it does give it a texture to it but you can sand that off if you don't like the texture so my jar is nice and dry I only did one coat of paint but I think that's enough for me you're going to take some napkins and I'm going to show you how to decoupage you might have come across this technique before if not it's really really fun easy and addicting once you start doing this kind of craft you really can't really stop so you're going to take some napkins and I have two here I don't know if I'll use both my husband is wondering whether I'm still alive because I've been crafting for so long I think it's taken me two days to make these projects so please do leave me a thumbs up and share this video with others I've actually shared quite a few techniques and hacks so it might be really useful for someone else as well so I'm going to have a look at how many bees I want on there I'm also going to use this one here just for the be happy again all of this ties in with the other two projects so if you're new to decoupage you take your napkin it doesn't have to be any particular napkin just get any napkin and you want to open it up why is this not opening <laughs> there we go and as you can see this is the non-shiny side and you've only got one shiny side and then you're going to take any layers out or off your main napkin sometimes you have two depends how many you've got in your napkin but in mine I've just got the one and then this gives you a really nice thin napkin to work with um, so then the next thing you want to do is just take your fingers and don't cut do not use the scissors to do this because it just looks really Odd. it just looks too neat almost some people wet their napkin but I never really find that I have to do that because I can rip it pretty well just like this okay and then have a look at where you'd like your napkin and I think mine will kind of go over like that so what I'm doing is taking Mud Podge 
and you can use PVA only if you water it down because PVA is really thick and it's just really not going to work the Mod Podge is very thin and you don't want to add too much Mod Podge because it can rip your napkin and I really love using decoupage for thrift makeovers it just is a quick way to give something a makeover and there's also a lot of possibilities because depending on the napkin design you've just got so many napkins and you're going to place your napkin on top and this is just some cling film I don't know what you guys are know cling film might be a UK thing but yeah you just take it and kind of press down on your napkin and this just sort of helps get rid of a lot of wrinkles the other tip that I have if you are doing decoupage is to go with a white background and make sure that you have painted your object white even if it's white like my jug was because you can see it just kind of melts into the background when you're working with a coloured background napkin it can kind of just look really untidy and you really don't get an effect like this so then you're gonna go over your napkin on top with your mud podge and there are so many different types of mud podge look at that it literally disappears into the into the object that you are working on and there's a lot of mud podges mud podges there's a lot of mud podge as i was explaining and the one that i'm using right now is glass i typically use matte but i have run out of that so Again, just going with what I've got right now. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. And you can seal it. You can take a sealant or just go over it with Mod Podge as a sealant. This is decorative, so I'm not going to put it in to wash or anything or use it to drink out of or anything like that. And I'm going to go over the whole of the jug with this mud podge because it's glass so you'll be able to see like if I just did this area you'll be able to see that and I just want it to look all the same in the meantime we'll start working on our bees and I think I'm not too sure if I should go with the bright colored foil bees here because the one on the jug is the same so I think I might go for the lighter ones. So again, let's start taking some of these, just working around using my fingers, ripping it and be very gentle. Obviously this is so fragile. And again, when you're applying the Mod Podge, go over it very lightly, just a thin layer because it gets too saturated and it can rip very easily. Taking the Mod Podge again, very lightly, let's see where we'd like a bee, I think around about here, so just a small layer of Mod Podge there, and then we'll take the bee, using the cling film, just dabbing again, and then securing the rest in place with more Mod Podge. Okay, maybe one here. I just love watching it melt into the, the background. So I went with three in the end because putting one here is just too symmetrical. So I'm taking this pre-made bow and I got this from Zadil and I'm gonna just stick that somewhere, <laughs> whether the top or right here. I'm taking these arrangements apart and I'm gonna use that, whoops, I'm gonna use that to place inside my jug. A pop of colour here. 
And here's our final transformation from that boring jug to this one here. Isn't it so much better? Oh, by the way, I did change the bow. I felt like that one was too big. So I went for the smaller one and I really like it now. You're going to be starting off with an egg carton. Now you can use one or two. I did go with two at the beginning, but then I decided to change my mind and go with one later on in the video. So you'll see. And I am starting off with some moss. This is reindeer moss and you can get it in different colours. I am using just a dark green here. And then I placed it inside the carton, not everywhere, just in some areas as you can see. So I'm basically making like an arrangement I would say. I started taking some roses and flowers. Some of them were dried and some of them were fresh. So I just started arranging them inside little cups of the egg carton then i took some shells these were just left over from breakfast and i made sure to keep them and i was really happy that the tea lights fitted in there just perfectly i thought i was going to have to melt them and pull them inside but it was just really easy i just took the tea light foil off and then just placed the tea light straight in so at this point I realised I don't want it too long and I just got rid of one of the cartons. Now if you're going to have this on your table as a centrepiece then by all means keep the length but I just felt like one suited what I needed. I don't know, I just preferred it. <laughs> It looks a lot more daintier and cuter. So then I decided to add some eggs to the arrangement and I am using these because I kind of wanted to go with shabby -shy kind of softer colours and to be honest these were the best eggs I had. The rest were all glittery and too bright too out there. So I just added more dried flowers in and these are actually chamomile so it smelled so wonderful, it smelled like honey, it was just so sweet. So I do suggest just filling in all of the gaps, you don't want it to look empty, you just want it to look pretty packed and that's what I carried on doing. I just added some flowers and I was actually debating with adding that purple dried flower there but it actually just gave it that pop of colour and it worked out well. And now for the final touch, I took some feathers and honestly it did finalise everything perfectly. I felt like something was missing and once I added that I was like, aha, that was it. I also added some white splatter. I'm doing this using an acrylic painter pen but you can use a paintbrush. And so this is the final look. I'm really happy with it, but let me know what you think in the comments. I just really like the style and it's so pretty. I think it looks pretty expensive as well. As we're diving into the second project, I'd just like to remind you if you haven't left me a thumbs up to please do so and make sure you subscribe, it really does help me. So I'm starting off with a rustic farmhouse candlestick holder and some raffia. We're going to be creating a nest using this raffia, so just grab a good amount and then you want to kind of scrunch it together to form a nest. Once you have your nest, place it on top of your candle holder and then you can grab some eggs. You can go with whatever size, whatever style you have. I actually tried quite a lot off camera. <laughs> so then I grabbed these in the end but I just really don't like that glitter. So I took some tester parts and I added some paint and these were nice neutral colours. And then I stuck my eggs onto my scissors simply because I didn't have any barbecue skewers on hand. So that just made it a lot easier to paint the whole egg without getting it all over my hands but I still did that anyway. So I just carried on doing that and I also used my heat gun which I've never done before and I was amazed how quick it dries paint gosh that's a that's definitely a tip and a hack so I definitely suggest that if you are impatient like me and you just want to move on with your project super quick so I painted three eggs in total and then I took my acrylic paint pen just to go and make some small dots on there just a little bit of detail don't need to do this if you don't want to and then I went and got some of the dried flowers I was using earlier to decorate the nest and make it all spring like I'm also cutting off any excess raffia so I was just grouping it in my hands to make it look more like a nest and then the odd bits that were poking out and being a bit naughty I was cutting them off and it just made the nest look a lot neater but also still look like a nest so then again just to finalize I took this feather and placed it inside and I was done
You know, this just proves that you don't need much to craft with and make something beautiful. I think nature is always just so amazing to use for crafting because it's free and it always looks so beautiful naturally. These DIYs have got me yearning for spring just that much more. So for the final DIY, I went to my garden and I grabbed a bunch of free stuff again. I got some of this really flexible, like, branch know what it's called and then I also got some greenery so I'm starting off with this I'm going to be creating two circles with them so you want to make sure that whatever you can find is pretty flexible so I tied the two sides together to form a circle using some twine and I'm just doing the same thing with this part here creating a circle and then tying the two ends together then once I've done that I'm going to place it inside like this we're going to glue the top and the bottom together using hot glue and when you're doing that just make sure it's nice and centered so again i'm just adding the hot glue on the bottom so now it's secure from the top and the bottom then i got my greenery and i placed it inside i didn't stick it down or anything it just sat in there really nicely and thankfully i got just the amount that i needed that i picked earlier in the morning and then i also added a small amount of greenery at the top and i, I thought that was just such a cute little touch and then i decided okay I need a bird to sit inside here so I went and I looked at what birds I've got and I found the one that I wanted and I sat him in there nicely so here he is hanging isn't he so sweet if you want to hang him then just add some extra string or rope at the top I also added in a nest at the bottom if you can spot it a little bit of brown that's showing that was just for stability you don't really have to do it and it's ones that you just kind of buy ready made and here he is without the string so he isn't hanging and I think he's perfect so we're going to be starting off with a jar so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to be placing some moss inside the moss that I'm using is natural moss and it's moss I have collected from my garden you can buy moss as well if you can't find any and if you know me by now you know that I love crafting with nature once you have your moss inside you want to grab some nests so these are the ones that I've got which are perfect because they've, al they've already got the eggs inside and it's nice rustic pretty natural looking as well so you can paint your eggs and decorate them but I'm going to leave mine just as they are because I'm going to place a fairy on top so I think that you won't really see that it's plain too much and as you can see these are the fairies I'm going to be using and they're full of colour they've also got some glitter on the wings so I placed my fairy inside and she fits wonderfully the other one was too big so I had to go with this one now you can use some flowers like these I felt like these were a little bit too big and I did want to go the natural route so I'm using these which are chamomile flowers for tea I used them in my last project so you're just going to place them inside your jar wherever you like so I'm having a look at the arrangement and just taking them out if I find that they're too much so once you're happy with your arrangement you can place your lid on top and then I'm going to be decorating the neck of the jar so I'm going to be taking some of this lace and I actually got this in the thrift shop it's a really nice mint green I don't typically go for this kind of colour but I thought I don't know it just really worked well so I'm going to cut this and I'm going to let it come down on the side here so we're just going to tie a knot here and then let it come down I've added a butterfly these are actually stickers so I give it a bent it a little bit just to make it more 3d and added that to the neck of the jar I think I might finalize with a flower right here so I'm going to cut that if I do use it and add it with some hot glue so here's our first whimsical project let me know what you think in the comments I personally adore it it's one of my favorite creations to date and I just love the simplicity of it it was so easy to put together and the vintage touches for the second DIY I'm going to be taking this scrap piece of wood from a photo frame that I didn't need so I've just removed the clip and now I'm going to remove this as well I'm going to take this piece of it's actually a sample so this is a grass piece if you want to get some grass cheap then just look for samples because I got a bunch of these I just paid 99p for postage so that works out really cheap I'm going to cut this to size and I'm going to glue it on covering the wood here now 
Now I'm going to take this miniature fence and add some glue to stick that down. Now to decorate I'm going to be using a mixture of real dried flowers. I'm also going to be taking some greenery from Tutla. This was a topiary ball so I'm just going to take them off like this and I'm going to add some glue and stick it there on the side. Now I'm going to be using the dried flowers. Just taking my hot glue again to stick that down right next to the fence. I'm going to make a little mini wreath for my fence so I'm taking some of this here just for my garden and this is flexible which is great because I can actually turn it into a little circle so that's what I'm doing I'm just going to cut this to size and bend it wherever I need so just bend that get it into a nice shape I think I'm going to cut it there so just taking my hot glue again and then taking my hot glue I'm going to decorate it with some dried flowers so I've got these yellow ones here I'm just sticking on you have to be so gentle with miniatures so I'm going to take the glue to stick it onto the fence I'm going to do that in the centre So I've just carried on decorating off camera because all I was doing was placing the flowers, the dried flowers, wherever I thought was appropriate. Now I'm going to be taking these cute ducks, I think it's going to give it a pop of colour, which is necessary. I mean, these do have colours but they're quite pale. This is really bright. I think we'll take three of them. So I decided to go with two in the end, three was a little too much. So again just taking my hot glue and placing those down. So this is how it's coming along so far, just because the angle you couldn't really see. I'm going to finish off by placing this little miniature fairy. I just thought she was perfect right here and you can stick her down and then a chair right there. Isn't this project just so full of innocence? To be honest, I think that's probably one of the elements that I love so much about fairy gardens and miniatures. I think using the natural flowers just balanced everything out beautifully. And for the final DIY today, I'm going to be taking a bird's nest and I'm going to use this as a wreath. I'm taking this fairy door and I'm going to place it inside and push it in as far as it goes and you can glue this down. I'm going to take a bird and we're going to stick him on top. I'm going to be taking some artificial greenery again. This was from a topiary ball and I just cut it. Taking my hot glue and we're going to stick it on the side of the door. So I've added a few more greenery here and we're going to keep this nice and simple because this is already decorated with the pinks and the green. I think this is tissue paper um, so I'm just going to grab some mushrooms and also some moss so I'm taking this really bright green and I'm going to stick that onto the nest underneath here because this is spring I really wanted to go with a bright green moss just to show everything is alive I'm addicted to these they're just so cute and I really love how shiny they are they always add that bit of colour that you need in a project so I'm just sticking one down here and then let's have a look if if any more go I think the orange one looks nice there let's try the yellow one whoops no the orange one looks way better yeah I might stick one here and I think let's stick the yellow one right there now I'm taking this um, paper it's actually a sticker <laughs> this vintage butterfly I'm going to add it here with my hot glue and then I've taken this from a ripped book and I thought that I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm going to spell out spring I'm going to have to cut out each of the letters so I've had to look for words with the letters that I need so I'm going to write spring and I'm going to stick it onto here and then place it here or somewhere so episode has a few letters that we need for spring I found a word 
that has ing so at least I have to cut out three different letters I've got it all in one go there so you can see my words down here spelling spring I'm going to have to stick it down now so I'm just going to do that with my glue stick so here it is we've spelt it all out <laughs> finally and now I'm going to cut it and stick it on look at how teeny tiny it is Here's a quick look at our third and final DIY for today. Please do share this video with others and let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. For the first DIY, I'm going to be using this here. I thought it was just so cute. It's a mini box, it's oval. I got it from Hobbycraft and I'm not going to be painting it up because I just love how rustic this looks. Next you want a music sheet, so I went and looked for a vintage one. You can dye it yourself if you can't find it, but it's so easy to find on the internet. So I've printed it onto some paper because my printer doesn't take card. So now I have to stick it onto some card just to make it a little bit stronger. You're going to grab your box and draw along it so you know how much to cut then you're gonna just cut that out so I had to cut it down a little bit more just so it can fit inside again I'm going to be taking my glue stick and adding glue inside the little tub then we're just gonna put that inside I'm taking this nest from Home Bargains and it's got the eggs already in there. I'm going to stick that at the bottom here, just using my hot glue. I'm going to stick it at an angle. I'm taking this tester part from Wilco and this is called a dotting tool. So I'm just going to create little dots on the eggs. Just give it a little bit more detail. Then I'm going to add a little bit of acrylic paint just to the nest to kind of make it, I don't know how to explain, but a little bit more rustic. I'm just dabbing away at the paint because I don't want it to be too much. Now I'm taking my acrylic paint again just to go over the edges of the box Again, very lightly, and this is why I love this tool. Just adds enough, but not too much. You have quite a lot of control over it. Now, I have this die cut book, and I've just got this out of it. And I thought that would look perfect in the middle, but I'm going to give it some height, some added dimension, so it can kind of pop out and just kind of look 3D. And to do that, I'm going to be using a sticky foam pad. So this is what they look like. And I'm just going to cut that size because it's too big for my paper. So a half should do. And if you want it to pop out more, you can even place two on top of each other. So I'm going to have a look to see if one is enough. I think I might actually go for two. So I'm just going to place that on top and then remove that and stick it in the centre. Perfect. So this is a finished project. I really, really love it. I think it's so rustic and vintage and oh, I just really adore this. It's one of my favourite creations. And then you can place the lid on top as well, which is great because then when you open it up, you have this gorgeous surprise. Okay, so on to DIY number two, I'm going to be using this tiny, super cute miniature teacup that I thrifted. I really love that. And it's going to be a little bit similar to the first DIY. So I'm going to be taking the same nest and I'm going to glue it inside at an angle. And again, I'm just taking my acrylic paint to make this a little bit more rustic. Add some dots to the eggs. It really does make a difference. Then I'm going to be taking this little bird here and we're going to fit him inside the cup on the nests and just glue him in place. I'm going to grab my scissors and cut these down as far as I can go. And then taking my hot glue, just add them 
wherever you like. So I'm going to put some right here in the nest and on the outer area of the cup. Let's take some greens and blues, we used that before. I'm taking a bigger flower here, again I'm just going to place it at the back. So you can use different colours, you can use different sizes. Taking a few more, so I've got these white ones here. I've cut it and again I'm going to stick it. So you can see some are inside and some are on the outer side of the cup. I'm taking a feather just to add here. I feel like it's a really beautiful touch. I felt like something was missing right here because I'm doing this quite packed out as you can see. So I thought a pearl would look really nicer. So I've got this garland and I'm going to just cut them off so you can see I've cut one ball off there. I think I'm going to need three maybe in total. So then I'm just going to glue them down in that area. Now we want to add a ribbon to hang the cup from. So I've chosen a pink one. I'm just slipping that through. And then I'm going to glue these two ends together. So here's the finished project. Look at how sweet and adorable it is. It fits in my two hands. Or oh, it can actually fit in one hand. And then you've got this to hang it from. For the final project of today, I'm taking a small canvas. This is actually from Arteza. The link to Arteza products are below in my description box. I'm starting off with a print from this vintage pad that I have. You can just print something off the internet like we did in the first project with the music sheet. I think I'm going to go for this one here. So as you can see it doesn't fit completely and that's generally why I stick with printouts. So I'm just going to place it on top and then fold it so I know how much to cut. Then you've got a crease down here. Now you can glue it down, I'm going to be using PVA, you can use Mod Podge as well. So you want to cover the entire surface of your canvas. Then I'm placing that on top. And then at the bottom, I'm taking the rest I have. Doesn't matter if it looks messy because I'm going to be layering anyway, so it's going to be covered. I'm going over the edges to make sure that they're sealed down. So you're going to do that all across. Then using my vintage pad again, I'm going to take this one here. And I think I'm going to have it like this. So I'm again, I've just kind of went over this with my finger so I can see how much to cut. And then taking my PVA again. Just adding that to the paper. Now I'm going over it with some matte mud podge just to seal this, the sides here. I'm taking this paper doily and I've got some tea here to stain it to make it look vintage and old. You can do this with coffee as well. So once you've done this and stained it, you want to um, either use a heat gun to dry it or you can just put it on a radiator. And I'm going to take my glue stick to stick that down. And then for my die cut book, I'm taking this piece here and I'm going to add that in the corner on top of the doily. So I got this from the thrift store and I've dyed it again in my mug of tea. So I'm going to dry it now and I'm going to be adding some material to the canvas. So this is how I'm going to add it. I haven't quite stuck this down because I wanted it to go underneath it a little. So I'm just going to cut that and stick it down. So I've also placed a little strip of lace right there and then I've got the corner one here as well. I've got this necklace again I always buy jewellery so that I can craft with it and finally I'm going to get to use this one. So I'm going to use three flowers and we're going to stick it in the corner of the canvas. So I'm going to remove these with some pliers. So I'm using two combinations of glue. So I'm using this one from Wilco. 
that's all purpose glue and then just taking my hot glue to put around there tucking it under those two flowers and then just pressing it for a while and then I'm taking apart some hair bands so I've got this blue I thought it's going to add a lovely touch of colour and then this pink one here which I'm yet to remove so as you can see I've added three butterflies, these are from my die cut book and now I'm going to be taking more jewellery, I've got this gold leaf and I'm going to kind of take away from the gold a little bit because it's all shiny, it looks too new so I'm going to be adding a little acrylic paint again using my little dabber now I'm going over the edges with some ink here and my dabber just to get rid of any harsh white from the canvas. Now I'm going to seal the butterflies and this with my Mod Podge again. This is a matte one and you can go with glass if you like. Now I'm going to finish off splatting the artwork with my acrylic paint pen and you can do this with a paintbrush and here's a look at the final completed project for today this was really arty and i had so much fun making it i haven't really done an art piece for some time and this was obviously mixed media we used a lot of things here we had some jewelry we had textiles we had card and paint i really love how this came out so for the first project we're going to be making a spring gnome i'm going to be making this the easiest way i've done this before once so i'm going to be using a disposable cup and this is going to be the main body of the gnome to cover the cup because obviously we don't want it to look like a cup i'm taking this piece of felt and i'm going to wrap it around and cut its size and we're also going to glue it in place now you can see it doesn't quite cover but that doesn't matter because we're going to have the beard in this area anyway so once you're done this is how it's going to look i'm just gonna secure those edges down Next you're going to be taking a plant pot, so this is the one that I've got and it fits perfectly on here. We're going to paint it so I am going with a bright yellow colour, this is Lemon Yellow by Arteza. So I'm going to call this the pot head gnome. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm going to need a few layers of paint, so I'm going to try this one with my heat gun and then apply a few more layers. The next thing you want to do is grab some faux fur. So I've got this white one here, I actually wanted yellow just to tie in with spring. So I didn't have any dye either. In the end I had to grab some paint and I took my material, added the paint with some water in a tub and then mixed it into the material and I've got this. So I actually did manage to dye it in the end and that explains all of the paint on my hands. So I'm going to stick this on my cup now. Then you're going to bring back your plant pot and we're going to stick it on the top here. Now I'm also taking a little bit of the faux fur and I'm going to stick it on the top so that it kind of looks like his hair is sprouting out of the plant pot. For his nose I'm going to be taking a wooden bead and I'm going to use some makeup just to colour it pink lightly. So I've got this old one that I had from when I was a child honestly, I've had it for so many years and now I use it for my craft so I've got this pink one, I'm just going to add that to the nose like this. And then taking my dotting tool, this is called, and you've got a sharp side and this one here is the one that I use just to make little dots with and I'm taking my white acrylic paint just going to add three or two little dots on the nose it's just just like this and then turn your nose around get some hot glue 
we're going to place it usually I'll place it right under the hat but this time I'm going to place it just slightly under and then whenever you add the nose the gnome comes to life now we're going to embellish so I'm taking some sunflowers and I'm going to hot glue them onto the plant pot I'm also going to take a green leaf and add that right next to the sunflower it looks like it belongs but it doesn't it actually came from another plant and then I'm taking some bees and I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't want it to be 3D it's like a puffy sticker and it gives it some dimension so just adding a drop of hot glue there and then just adding a final bee there this is actually still wet, that's why it looks like a wet dog. So hopefully it dries and looks a bit better. Fluffs up a little bit, I'm going to brush it. I really love how unique and creative this gnome is. It's definitely one of a kind and I just love the sunflowers and the bees and the little bit of hair that's coming out of that part. For the next project, I'm taking a piece of bark. I found this in the park, that rhymes. <laughs> And then I'm going to be taking some artificial flowers and greenery. So these are lavender. This was actually off a wreath. And then I've got some bits here. So I'm just going to be working with these, arranging them how I like, and then sticking them down with some hot glue. going to place this purple fairy in the middle so I'm going to carry on arranging but I just needed to place her there to see how it looks in the grooves I'm going to add some small little sprigs like this and then I'm taking these flower heads to carry on decorating I'm taking a vintage butterfly and I'm going to add that right here just taking my hot glue again to stick that down and then let's add two toadstools going to have them at various heights so this one a little bit longer and then this one shorter so it comes down like this or vice versa you can just take them off the wires with some pliers so this one I'm going to stick directly down and then to finish off I'm taking a bee and I'm going to add that to the flower with my hot glue again just taking sticky foam pad off so here's the final project let me know what you think because I really love it I think it's so sweet and I love the fact that I use the natural bark and then you've got the artificial greenery and I just love how all the colors and the elements have come together the addition of the paper butterfly as well as that sweet bee sitting in the flower Okay, so for the next project, I'm going to be taking this frame here. I don't like the colour of it, I actually painted this for another project, so it's not even the original colour. But I'm going to paint this white. So my frame is nice and dry now. I actually use like three layers and you still can see a little bit of the brown coming through, but I don't mind that. And then I've taken some sticks and painted them, that's their natural colour. So we're going to turn this into a window. I'm going to cut them to size. This one fits perfectly actually. So I'm going to have one in the middle and then one going this side. So we're going to cut this and then you're going to stick them in place with whatever glue you're using. I always use hot glue. So I'm just sliding the other one in position. And this actually doesn't need to be glued down because it just fits in there perfectly. Now we're going to start decorating the window and I'm going to take some moss as well as some flowers to do that. So let's begin with one of these paper flowers. I think I'm going to need some pliers to get rid of the wire. 
So I'm going to go with the pink and then I think a red. And then I'm going to be adding some moss to the corner as well. And depending on the moss that you, you're using, this one is reindeer moss and it's quite like chunky. <laughs> so sometimes I like to just trim it a little bit, neaten it up. And then in this corner again, I'm going to be adding some glue and then we're going to stick some moss down. I'm taking some more flowers. These ones are artificial flowers, so they're not paper flowers. And I'm going to stick them here. I actually replaced the paper flowers because I preferred the way that these look. I'm taking this butterfly sticker and I'm going to cut it because I don't like the excess card around it. And then we'll go and stick it, I'm thinking here. We'll go ahead and stick that on. I'm going to leave the sticky foam pad on there because I do want a little bit of dimension. So I've just printed this on the internet onto some paper. It's a watercolour painting of a sky. And I'm going to stick that onto some card for stability because the paper is a little bit flimsy. And then we're going to add that to the back of this so it's going to be looking like this how gorgeous does that look and if you want to you can actually do this by hand yourself watercolor painting is quite easy and it's really relaxing to do so just taking my glue stick here to stick the image on to the card i've just placed my window on top i'm going to draw along it so I know how much to cut because the rest of that goes white so you can't really see and I'm sorry I'm using fabric scissors I know a lot of people get annoyed with that then once you've got it all ready and cut out size take your glue and add some all the way down the border of the frame Got to be quick with hot glue as well. Right, and then we have to secure that in place. This may be my favourite project from today. It's vintage, shabby chic and miniature so it really screams me. So I'm going to be starting off using a picture frame. I have used this for another project so I've got a glass that doesn't quite fit. These are all spares from other projects but we're going to put them all together. You're going to start by removing these little clips at the back and you can do that with your pliers. Let's set this aside for a little while and we're going to be using a mould. So I'm going to go with probably, let's see actually, <laughs> I thought I was going to go with that one there but let me bring this back. What you want to do is make sure that the mould fits the area that you're going to be working on. So I'm just going to have one at the top there and I actually do think the first one goes the best. So you can use clay, I always use hot glue when I'm using my moulds, it's just really quick and easy, it's also super cheap. So you're going to grab your hot glue if you are using hot glue that is, and you're going to fill your mould, make sure you get into all of the little cracks as well. Once you've finished you set this aside just to cure for maybe I think two to three minutes should do. So I'm covering the entire mould with my hot glue and that's that done so set that aside just to be productive we're going to go back to working on the frame so turn your frame around and your glass is obviously going to fit better than mine as I mentioned these are all just spares from other projects so I'm going to glue this down and you want to use um, hot glue or E6000 so I'm going all around the frame so that we can secure the glass down. Now you're going to keep your frame this way around and you want to grab a napkin. I'm going to use this floral oil because I'm going obviously with shabby chic as a theme in this video. So I have removed, this is already something I have worked with, so I have removed the inner layers and then I'm going to 
take a few pieces you want to do this just with your fingers not scissors if you're new this is called decoupage where you use napkins to decorate things one of my favourite techniques actually and I'm going to just ensure that I get as much excess napkin off as possible I always recommend using a napkin with a white background it just always works better this one's pink okay so there's one piece done then you're going to grab your glue and you have to use Mod Podge PVA is quite thick it doesn't work very well with your napkin and this is matte if it will come out I don't have much of it so I keep using glass but I really wanted matte for this one and I'm actually going to be doing reverse decoupage so usually you'll put it on this way but we're going to put it on where the design is and you want to put a really thin layer on just enough to kind of get it to stick onto the glass okay being very gentle this is obviously a napkin super thin and delicate and I'm going to place it right here and then just tap it down and then you're going to make a few more because you want to cover as much as you want on the glass so I'm going to do the exact same thing and just get a few of these so I can stick them down I'm also putting in some smaller flowers because I don't want it looking all the same now we're done with the napkin decoupage part you can bring back your mould and it would have definitely dried by now so we're going to pop that out and this is how it looks pretty neat right so I've gone and took my scissors and just cut off any excess hot glue so we're going to paint this and we're going to attach it to the top with our glue and I'm just going to use hot glue again hot glue on hot glue I know and I think I'm going to go with this colour here by Arteza Playful Pink it's a beautiful iridescent colour and I'm really impatient so this is wet at the moment but I'm going to just take my glue and stick it on to the frame right in the centre if you thought we're done, nope, you're, you're wrong we've got a little bit more to go so I'm taking my stencil here this is one of my favourite stencils let's see, it's Pranti Crafts by Jolanda I hope I've said that right anyway it's a stencil in A5 size okay so you're gonna put your frame this way towards the back you're gonna take oh that fits perfectly I'm so happy with that you're gonna take your stencil and then what you need is something called modeling paste and a little tool like this I mean you don't really need this you can use a butter knife for example but you do need this modeling paste acrylic paint won't work the same trust me I've done it I've tried it <laughs> and we're going to press the stencil down and take our modeling paste you're going to go through the stencil like this with your tool almost feels like you're icing a cake I'm just going to pull that down to hold it in place while I get a little bit more and of course we're going to cover the whole thing and now you're 
you're done, you're going to gently lift your stencil and look at the magic you've just created. Of course, you're going to let this dry, but let's just turn it around. Look at that. Isn't that so beautiful? Now the next two DIYs are going to be really fairly quick and easy. So I'm taking this thrifted candle holder and I've taken this rose which I have dried and I have had a few people ask me how I dry them. Certain flowers like baby's breath just dry wonderfully naturally. Roses dry very well naturally as well so all I do is get them out of the vase and I place them on top of a radiator or I hang them upside down just to dry naturally. So this here I have sprinkled with a little bit of white paint. You can see the splatter. Just wanted to add a little bit something to it and I'm going to be sticking this on the side here. And I'm going to do that just with my, you guessed it, our glue. Then I'm going to be using this bow, which I actually saved from a pyjama set, so <laughs> just save everything that you can, it will come in handy. And these are so much better than me trying to make a bow myself. Stick that there. And that's it, I'm done with decorating this one. Now another quick project, I'm just going to be taking a jar. And I'm going to be filling it up with some flowers, all in the shabby chic colours. I've got these really beautiful ones from Zadil. I'll leave the link in the description box. They're so beautiful, I love them. What I'm going to do is add my fairy lights in first. This is a warm light one. I prefer the warm light one. And then go ahead, take your flowers and place them inside your jar. Here's all three projects together, they look beautiful, I also think they look pretty alone but it just goes to show you don't always have to make something elaborate, I mean the first DIY was a bit longer but the other two are very quick and simple and it just doesn't take much to put something beautiful together. We're going to be making a really nice shabby chic wreath and this is perfect to gift as well as use for decor. I'm starting off with this beautiful satin shimmery material here. You're going to cut your material long enough to double over so make sure that you have the length that you are happy with. I think something like this would probably look right. Now we're going to start gluing this together so you want to create like a pocket and it's going to be holding some flowers or roses so I'm doing this inside out I'm going to place hot glue down this side and then I'm going to glue it onto the other side like this now I'm gluing the bottom together add some hot glue and then turn that over we're going to do the same on the other side so flip that around we're going to turn it the right way so it's going to be a little sack you're going to grab your flowers and I have two bunches that I'm going to be using. These are from Home Bargains and I'm going to be using a pink. Like I said, I'm trying to stick with shabby chic colours and I do love the subtle colours. I don't really like the bright red so that's why I'm going with these. I'm going to mix them up. Let me know in the comments if you celebrate Valentine's, if you do anything for Valentine's. Do you gift anyone or do you make 
decor. I don't usually do decor by the way, I'm just completely doing it for my channel and my watches. But my mum's birthday is coming up and I thought I could make this for her. I'm going to use a hairband to group them all together, tie them together. So you're going to need to place something inside your material because it's just going to be really flimsy and flop around everywhere. So you can add cardboard and that's probably the best option. I just couldn't find any so I had to use what I had and I just used a tissue paper. That definitely helped and then I just placed my flowers in the middle. Let's just push that aside for a moment and I'm going to be taking some lace. I'm going to be creating a little bit of detail to add on the center here right in the middle and this is a little bit too big so I'm folding it over and we're going to stick that down making it smaller kind of like a ribbon so I folded it in half it's a little bit too big still so I'm going to fold it again but not completely just like this and I'm going to glue this down And now let's bring the flowers back. I'm going to stick it in the centre, so just adding some glue on the fabric. I'll do the back in a little while, but we'll start with the front. Make sure you're nice and happy where you like it. Now turning it around, just adding the hot glue to the rest. I had this from a diffuser so I'm going to get rid of this and then we're just going to stick that right in the middle. I think this craft can be suitable for weddings as well, maybe a gift, some kind of decor. So I've got these hearts that I used in a previous project last year and I kept them and I think I'm going to add them to the floral arrangement. So I'm taking these off because I'm going for more neutral, well, so kind of subtle colours this time around. And these were initially from Poundland and they came with these, they're like stakes. So I'm going to get this back in there with some hot glue and secure them in place and then we're going to add them to the flowers. Oops. I decided I'm going to add a little bit to them because I thought this was just so adorable. I'm going to take one pink ribbon, or bow rather, and I'm going to stick that right there. I'm going to do the same with two white ones. I felt like the pink would be too much to make it all pink, and I want love to be the main one, so that's why I chose a pink. And these are pre-made bows. I always use them. They came in a pack and they're just so handy. I'm going to make love in the centre. And then the other two will be behind. Isn't that so cute? It's coming along wonderfully. I'm going to embellish, by the way, ignore all of this. I've been trying a few things off camera, but I'm going to add a little bit more embellishment. I'm taking this key and because it doesn't go with the colours and the style, I'm just taking an acrylic a painter pen and I'm going to go over that a little bit because I don't mind a little bit of the brown coming through. I think it looks nice. It makes it look a bit vintage, but it was too much just being full brown <laughs> or copper rather. So I've added my key to some clear string because I don't want it to be distracting so I want the key to be like the focus point and not the string that's carrying it. I'm also going to be adding a label. I think this is probably my final thing to finish the project off. I'm using these from Home Bargains and I'm actually going to cut some of this to stick on there. I think I'm going to probably go with something like this. Nice and vintage, again shabby chic, maybe this one here. So I'm going to draw along this. Then I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to grab the two and stick it together. I'm just going to add some glue on the tag itself. this and if you don't have a 
book like this with lovely paper you can always just print something off the internet onto some paper or card especially if you're using a tag because you've got that um, structure behind it anyway I'm just going to pop this through and then taking my clear string we're going to thread that through And then the key, so it kind of goes on top of my label. Look at how beautiful that is. They really complement each other. So this is a final project and I made this beautiful vignette. I just thought it's going to really complement it. And I've always loved like a mix of shabby chic and vintage. I love the soft, delicate, so this really is me. I'm going to be starting with this shabby chic frame obviously it had the glass and the backing I've just removed it all so I've got the frame itself to work with I'm also going to be using this teacup again a really lovely shabby chic and I'm going to be sticking it down to my frame at the bottom using my hot glue you can use E6000 or any kind of glue that you like before I go ahead and stick the cup down onto the frame you're going to take a foam block or foam brick and we're going to cut a little bit off and place it inside the cup Next I'm going to be taking some of my dried flowers, I always love to just keep these from bouquets and use them in my projects and I'm going with these really dainty ones like the baby's breath and some of these purple ones, I'm not too sure on the names of those ones and I'm going to fill my cup just covering all of the foam brick. And then once you're done filling your cup, if you find that you've still got some spaces that you can see, you can fill it up with moss so you can glue it down with your hot glue and you can do that before you stick the flowers in, it will probably be easier. I just hope that I had more to work with so you wouldn't really be able to see that much. So this is my cup now, it looks like a little miniature meadow, I really really love it, it's so pretty and dainty. So now we're going to go and stick our mug, sorry our cup, into the frame. So this is how our frame and our cup look so far. I've made sure that I've just jam packed the flowers and I'm really happy with it. Now I want to add one final touch which is this hummingbird. I was actually going to work with this one but it's way bigger. So I'm going to go with this one and I do like that it's got softer colours. And I was just playing with the angle but I'm going to have him as though he's just um, flying above. So here's a beautiful structure. And now for the hanging, you can add something to the back to hang it from. Or, like me, you can take an old picture frame backing. This was from another project, I didn't need it. And I've just taken this apart, it just came off really easily, just ripped it. And then I'm just going to glue that to the back so we can actually lean it and have it standing. So here's a look at our final project. I've hung this on my wall and I'm loving it, it looks so beautiful. I think I'm going to make another one just to gift my mum because I'm sure she's going to love it as well. I'm going to start my second DIY with three pieces of wood. I'm going to put them all together just on top of each other like this and you can glue them down, I'm not, just so I can use them for other projects. Then we're going to be taking half a bauble. And you want to get rid of this part here and to do that you want to grab your pliers. When you're doing this be very gentle and very careful because you don't want it to crack the rest of your bauble. There we go, it should be fairly quick and simple just like that. 
and you can just sand this area here. So you're going to grab some moss and you want to add some hot glue to stick it all down. You want to cover the entire surface of your wood. Then we're going to take a little angel or cherub and we're going to place him in the middle. Again you can stick him down if you like and then I'm going to be taking these miniature flowers. These are paper ones and we're going to remove this wire. You can just do it with your hands, I usually do. You want to take some hot glue again and stick them wherever you like inside the mass. Once you've done that, take your bauble and place it on top and it's up to you if you'd like to have the moss like tidied up and cleaned and you don't want any coming out but I really like the look of it this way so I'm keeping it as it is and you can stick the bauble down with some hot glue if you like again I'm just keeping mine like this I just want to quickly show you how I'm going to style it. I'm taking this vintage book I found in a thrift store and I think I'm going to go with this page here. So we're going to turn this around and we're going to place it just on top like this. And then I'm taking a thrifted pearl necklace and I'm just going to place that somewhere around here. So here's how our second project looks finished. I really love this. It's more like vintage and shabby chic. I just think it's adorable. It's sweet. It's magical. It's everything that I love all in one. I really hope that you love these projects as much as I do. We've got one more left. For the third DIY, I'm going to be using this slate, which I have used for a previous project. So if you can see a little bit, I'm going to start by giving it a coat of chalk paint. So I just need to mix this up a little bit. just gone in and dried the first layer with my hot air gun. Now I'm going to go in with another layer of paint. Now my slate is dry we're going to be doing some decoupage so I've got my napkin and my mud podge. I'm removing all the inner layers of the napkin. Usually when I'm doing decoupage I'll cut pieces out but I'm going to go with the whole half of the napkin here so it's going to be easier than usual and we're going to start by applying a layer of Mod Podge down onto our placemat. I'm taking some cling film to press it down and get rid of as many wrinkles as I can. Now I'm getting rid of the excess napkin on the sides. going to go with some more Mod Podge just on the sides to seal all of the napkin in. And you can see it just really melts into the placemat. And that's also why it's important to paint whatever object you're using when you're doing decoupage in a white background. And as always, I advise to use a white background napkin 
It just always looks better if you are new to decoupage. So you can see like all of the grooves here are still showing up, which I love. So I'm going to go over the whole placemat with some varnish. You can use Mod Podge as well if you want. And this dries really quick. You don't need much at all either. Now my varnish is dry. I'm taking this stamp and some black ink. This is a script writing, which I love. And we're going to just stamp that down right here. I'm only doing like a quarter of the stamp, as you can see. Now I'm done with the stamping, I'm going to dry brush a little bit of this white acrylic paint. So I like to just stab my paintbrush and then get rid of the excess on the actual paint itself. <laughs> As my final touch, I'm going to take this little tester paint and I've added a little bit to my paintbrush. I'm just going to flick it to create a little bit of kind of just an artistic effect, basically. And here's our final project for today, a beautiful botanic placemat. I'm so happy with how all these projects have come out. I'm starting off with this mason jar I got from Poundland, and then I'm taking some of these foam moss balls and we're going to stick them on top of each other with some hot glue like this and i'm going to make it a little bit more realistic by adding some more moss on top this is reindeer moss and you can get it in different colors as you can see it looks like a mess right now so i'm taking my scissors tidying it up a little We're going to add some toadstool to this, so I'm just removing the wire and then taking my hot glue to stick them down. I'm adding some flowers, so I'm going to take some artificial ones, long ones like this at the back, and then I'm also going to add in some real dried flowers. Now you're going to bring your jar back. And we're going to gently place this inside. And you see how I've left a gap here? You're going to take some stones, you can take some gravel if you want. I'm using this from Ikea. So I've just got the smallest ones I can find and I'm going to place them inside at the bottom. Now I'm taking this small fairy that I got from the works. And I'm going to place her inside, sitting on the moss. Now you're going to get some of this hair gel, the blue one from Poundland, and you're going to put some inside so that it just goes in this area here that we have available for the fake water. So you can see what lovely detail that's added. And this is my secret tip, instead of using resin because that's a lot more harmful and a lot more expensive. And this isn't going to dry up because you're going to have the lid on so it can stay for years. It literally does not dry up because I've done this quite a few times now. I've cut some of this netting off so that I can use it on the top. I just feel like this is really perfect for fairy projects. So this will go under the lid and the lid will go on top. I'm also taking some old jewellery and this is a key embellishment that I got in a pack. So what I'm going to do is remove this leaf here and add the key because I feel like that's more fairy related. Just to match the silver, I'm going to colour this in with my Arteza marker. Next I'm taking this LED tea light and I'm just pushing it through the net so I've created a hole. And that way you can have access to it, the on and off button, because we're not sticking it inside on the lid. So as you can see, you close it and then when you open it, you 
can just turn it on and off and screw the lid back on. For the final touch I'm going to be adding some lace and this has some pearls on so I thought it'd look really nice, kind of like shabby chic. I'm just going to cut it size and then hot glue it on. And so here's today's finished project. Didn't I tell you this is just so magical and wonderful? It really does have a special place in my heart. And I really hope that this has inspired you. It is really quick and easy, so you can definitely have a go at it. And let me know what you think of my secret tip using the blue hair gel. If you're into making crafts to sell, then you should definitely try this because things like this really go quite pricey. I think these also make wonderful gifts so I might make a few for my friends and family and this is how it looks at night isn't it just so magical I really love how it illuminates the inside and I have decided to use the battery operated LED that changes lights but you can go with one color only so I'm taking a book and don't worry I always get books that are ruined and ripped so that I can rescue them and make use of them for some projects so I'm going to be starting off with some acrylic paint I'm going to paint this side and this side so I've actually painted this I think three times in total and yeah it's really I don't know why but basically the background is still showing the green is coming through as you can see but I don't know I'm hoping that the next step will cover some of that green and also I'm going to be going in with some more detail later so I'm not too worried about it so I'm just taking a tea bag here let me just move that so you can see and I'm a big 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 tea lover <laughs> and a tea drinker I don't have any coffee so I'm going to stain this so that it looks nice and vintage you can do this with coffee as well so just like this this is actually one of my husband's shot glasses for his coffee Just going to do the other side and then I'll leave this to dry before moving on to the second stage. So it's actually started ripping now. <laughs> I'm going to add some drops. Okay, that was too much, but just a little here and there because I want it to look a little bit stronger in some areas. And I'm just taking a wet wipe just stabbing some of the areas where it's a little bit too runny. Also, I'm going to remove some of this tea. But I quite like the texture with the tea, so I'm not too fussed again if, if that's on there. And look at how impatient I am, like there's so much paint here that hasn't dried. Just remove all of that, look at that. So just moving on to this page here, and look at the mess on my table. The next thing that I am going to be doing is taking some moulds, and I really recommend buying moulds because it's just a cheap and easy way to embellish, and you can use them over and over again, and you can use them with clay or with hot glue. So I am going to be using this mould here, as you can see, it's just so, so pretty. It's got some birds and flowers, and I've got two pieces here, but I'm going to need more, so I'm just going to take my hot glue and fill those up as well. And right now they don't look like much, they just look like plastic or hot glue. But when you add the paint, the details really come through and it just looks so, so beautiful. So I think it was this one that I filled up. So you just go over the whole design with the glue. can be a bit tricky when you've got little grooves, you know. Sometimes the hot glue doesn't reach them. Oh, I forgot the the other one. And then when they are set, you, you know, you just have to wait for about a minute. So they do set really quickly. Then sometimes I take my scissors and I just give them a little tidy. Sometimes I've used too much hot glue and there's a little excess. So I just get rid of those and tidy it up. This is another mould that I am using. This is supposed to be like, I suppose, mimicking rope or twine. 
Let me just show you a little, little bit up close. And I think I'm going to add that as the borders. So I've got one here that didn't come out so great. You can see that piece there. So with some of the molds, I open them up like this. That's why the second one turned out completely fine. Just doing that to get all of the, the sides basically that I need to cover the book. And now the ones I did earlier are set. Just remove those. And this is how you tidy it up. So as you can see, like all of this piece here, I don't need and it's just going to get in the way. So I'm taking my scissors and just cutting away at that. Be careful not to cut the bits that you want. It's really easy to do that. And I'm doing this while I'm waiting for more to set. That's still tacky. And now I'm doing the flowers. I feel like these ones are a little bit harder because it's kind of hard to see the design from the excess pieces of hot glue. I always can't wait to add paint to these because they really come to life. It's kind of like exciting. So while I wait for some more moulds to set, I've got the ones that have set and that I have tidied up with my scissors here. Now I'm going to start adding the paint to them, the exciting part. So these are iridescent Arteza acrylic colours. I think I might go with this colour here, maybe this and that colour. So I'm just opening it up and I'm going to colour the flowers in this beautiful pink. So while I am waiting for these to dry, my embellishments, I'm going to start adding some more detail. Now I'm taking one of these, what are they, I was going to call them stencils, but they're stamps. This one is in a nice script font and I'm just going to be using black ink. So I'm just adding the ink to that so that I can stamp it down onto the paper. So unfortunately I don't have like a size that fits the entire thing, I've just got to tile it. Now I'm just doing the bottoms and then the edges. So I'm just doing the exact same thing on this side here and once I have finished I'll come back. Now I need to dull down some of this because I feel like it's too busy and it's really black. So I'm just taking some Arteza powder to do this. And again, it's got a really lovely iridescent shimmer to it, as you can see. Can you see? <laughs> there you go. Like, look at that part there. It's like got a pink shimmer to it. And that just works a lot better as well for our fairy project. going to be taking my hot glue to stick down the embellishments that we have created and painted. So you're just going to take the glue and add it to the back and stick it on. So I am just sticking these ones down and I chose to paint them in a nice white iridescent colour. I'm going to need to cut maybe unless I do it like that. Yeah I think I'm going to centre it like that. So I've got a little bit here on the two sides but that's okay. So again just taking my hot glue and we're going to stick that down. Right on the edge and I'm just going to keep doing that until I'm done sticking them down. I'm also doing the bottom page. So now I have finished decorating my book, I'm going to start adding in objects. I've got this little miniature fairy doll and I think I'm going to hot glue that so that this side is kept open or kept ajar with the door. So I'm going to add some glue just at the back of here. 
and then some at the bottom. I got this from Pound Stretcher. It came with some windows as well. Just making sure I've got it centered. I brought you guys a little closer down because I'm going to start adding in all of the details and it just was a bit awkward filming from up there. So now I'm just going to start adding moss and a lot of natural goodies. So again, I just collect moss from my garden, from the park. It's a bonus because it's all free. So I'm going to take my hot glue and start securing that in place. I'm just trying to get rid of the soil in the corner there. I'm going to cover the door with some moss as well. We really want it to look like it's a secret door. Now I'm adding a few things again from my garden. I've got some ivy and a few flowers. Now I'm going to be adding some fairy lights and these fairy lights are the bottle ones. I feel like they are just smaller and easier to use. So I always love using fairy lights with wires as well because you can mold it to whatever you like a lot easier. So I am just going to be doing just that, moulding it to this area where I've got all of my moss and I'm also going to try to cover it a little bit so that you kind of don't see the wire. And I'm going to put it across all down here and bring it back to the back where the battery pack is. So I brought a little bit of the fairy lights onto the moss and I've covered the wire with the moss so you can't see the wire and I'm really loving it. So now I am just finalising, I'm taking a little fairy table and adding that in the centre and then these little chairs that go with it. Where's the other chair? I've lost it now. I thought I was done but I decided I need one more thing. So I'm taking this key, I've added a jewellery chain this is cut from another project that I use, it's just leftovers and I am going to glue it to the top here so that the key is dangling down. So this is a great way of repurposing old jewellery. I always love using jewellery in my crafts. And I don't know if I should add a fairy to this or not actually. Let's have a look. I don't know. Really hard actually to judge. I think this time I'm going to go without the fairy. I had to take five minutes out to decide that. But I think, I don't know, it just adds to the imagination without the fairy there this time around. So this is the final project. What do you guys think? You have to let me know because I had so much fun making this and I'm really happy with the way that it came out. To make your floating teacup, you're going to take this cup and saucer set I got from Poundland for a pound and then a fork that you don't want to use anymore. You're going to take your pliers and bend the fork. And this is going to be a little bit hard. So you just want to bend this part here and then we're going to also bend the bottom. Now you're going to want to use a combination of two glues. So something that's pretty strong like super glue, E6000. And then I'm also using hot glue. I'm also going to add a rack just here to weigh it down a little bit. Then set that aside. And I'm taking two rugs because I need to kind of strengthen the structure. And also it's probably going to tip over. We need to weigh it down. So I'm taking two here. I might need to increase it. And again, using my two combinations of glues. Now you want to add some glue at the bottom of your fork, again using strong glue, you can use a combination like me, and then I'm going to sandwich it in between this rug here like this. Now 
Now I'm going to leave this to set. I'm just going to put some pliers on there or something heavy. And then we will come back to doing the fun bit, which is the decorating. So I thought I would have to wait for that to set like overnight, but I'm literally working on it the next five minutes. So I'm quite happy with that because I hate waiting for things to dry. Okay, next I am taking this roll, which I just recently bought on my shopping trip to Donalm. It's £2.50. I really love it. I think I have to go and get some more. So what I'm going to do is just fill the cup so that we can cover the whole structure, basically, the stone and the fork. Next, I'm using some reindeer moss to cover the stones inside here and also the back of the structure because we don't want to see any of that fork so just quickly this is the roll from Poundland if you want to use that and this is the moss it's typically out for Easter I don't think they do it any other time unfortunately I want to break some of this colour up with some neutral moss now. Adding a touch of pink. Then I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow so that it kind of looks like flowers. Then taking some kind of purple coloured moss. And just adding that to the side. So now I've finished with the moss and I know I used a lot of it. I'm going to start decorating and I thought this would go really well. It's actually a clip, a hair clip. So I always repurpose these kind of things like jewellery as well. I'm just going to try to cut it away so that I can use it in this project instead. Okay that came off nicely. Hopefully this will do the same. There we go, and just see where I'd like to place it. And now I'm going to start adding a few little stones. I've got some of these artificial trees, so I'm going to stick one of those down. And I got them off eBay, I can give you the link if you'd like using one of these fences that I cut from the works and then some toadstools I've just removed the wire from it I'm adding in some of this lavender it's called berry spray for two pounds from Dunelm I'm adding it to the back here I'm also using some dried flowers I always like using that, it makes things just look a little bit more realistic, especially when you're using a lot of artificial things. Just added a little chair, a little fairy chair there, and then this door that I got from the works a few years ago, just in the centre. Okay, I'm going to have to record the next bit like this because Leo has decided to take my whole table. So the next thing that I did was I just printed out Spread Your Wings and Fly. I got a really nice font off the font. That's the website that I often use. And I have printed it onto some paper because my printer won't accept cards. So I've got it on paper and I've stuck it down onto some card using my glue stick. And now I'm basically just going to cut it so that I've got each word cut separately. Now I'm going to go in with some of my ink, <laughs> so I'm not sure what colour I'm going to be using, probably pink. I'm just going to highlight the edges so that it's not basically as plain. So you just kind of go over the edges like this. You can see it gives it a little bit of colour. Now I'm just going to hot glue them on. I 
I'm finishing off with this small little orange butterfly. I got it from this die cut book, which is from the works. So I'm just going to stick it here and hopefully finish because I'm just going to keep adding and I usually go like with less is more, but with this I've definitely gone with more is more. So just add that there. And then leave off. Leave off here, Liana. Just stop. So here's the finished thing. So here's the finished project. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments because I'm thinking of gifting this to my mum. Hopefully she likes it. I think the message is really nice as well. It's just jam-packed and I'm quite liking this whole secret garden. <laughs> I just did a secret garden project. And I think I'm still inspired. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to be working with. There's two sides, so I've got that side with a little door and this side here. I'm going to be starting by giving it a few coats of this white chalk paint. I'm not gonna lie, this has taken forever to paint. I think I'm on like layer three and it's quite a thin so I don't think I'm that happy with this paint but we're going to keep going I have decided to leave the door the original color I'm not sure if I'm making the right decision but we'll see so here it is finally all covered painted and dry I don't know how many layers this took <laughs> I literally lost count probably six I don't know why it took so many and does anyone else's chalk paint go a little bit yellow after drying. I'm not sure why mine does, but it's okay, it works for this. It makes it look vintage, which I'm going for anyway, because I'm going to distress it now with some sandpaper. This is what goes on when I'm trying to craft. <laughs> look at how naughty she is. Her brother's just like all sweet sleeping in there, but her, she's a naughty one. So I've just finished sanding it, I'm quite happy with it. I didn't want too much like distress, I just wanted a little bit here and there. And now I'm going to just start decorating. So I've got some moss, I've got different coloured moss and I'm going to be working with reindeer moss here. And I really love like that I kept this like this because it looks like a door and it looks really vintage and really does look like a secret garden. And I also like that it has two sides of it so we're going to work with both sides not just focusing on the one side here i think i'm going to start with this side perhaps i'm also going to be using some of these stickers i'm just going to remove this part and then use my hot glue to attach it instead Using my ink pads, I'm just going to add a little bit to the edging of the circle. This one is gold glittered. I'm just taking some paper flowers, cut them off with some pliers and attaching it with my glue. decided to take some old jewellery apart so I've got some really nice beads now I'm just going to add that I'm not sure how many I'm going to add but I'm just taking one for now adding it just to the end there so I've just been playing off camera and I have found this charm in my stash I thought this will fit really perfectly inside because, you know, it's a bird in a birdcage so it matches with a secret garden theme. So I wanted it to dangle down and I had to look for a necklace that I can basically take the chain off. So I'm going to try to match it. I mean, I think that's probably okay. So what I'll do is just take this off with my pliers and then attach it to it so then we can hot glue it on the top there. I'm also going to need the hoop with it as well. So we'll just open this up, release it from the rest of the necklace. 
Am I the only one who buys necklaces that no one wants just so that I can use them for my crafts? There we go, and close it up. I don't need the chain, so let me just see actually, I might need the chain. I don't think I need the full length, that's way too long. So what we will do is measure how long you want it to dangle down and then we'll cut off the excess. So just attaching some hot glue now, I broke it off, being really careful with my fingers because the amount of times I have burnt myself. And then just sticking it right in there, hopefully that's the centre, if not gonna have to pull it off and start again. I'm going to make use of this cardboard because that's what crafters do and I've just taken some of these dry transfer lettering. I'm basically going to write out secret garden on there. So let's see hopefully I've got all of the letters. I've had this for years. Sometimes they'd be a bit naughty and don't stick on so I'm hoping luck is with me today. I think I might go with the smaller ones. Let's just check. Oh, all of the E's are missing. I need to order more of these. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm going to be able to go with the smaller size. Let me just have a look off camera. Okay, I might just have to mix and match. So let's get started anyway. Let's think about this. Just go over the letters. Now I'm just going to cut them out so that we can create a sign. We're going to ink this up a little bit and then we're going to give it a little bit of dimension so that it's not stuck flat and it rises up a little with those puppy stickers. I think they're called foam stickers. I think I'm going to go with pink on the edges. So this one doesn't cover all the way, but that's completely fine. That's enough to stick with. So I think that I have done everything that I want to do on this side. You know, simple is more for me. I don't like to embellish too much. So we're going to turn it around and start working on this side as well as the inside, because of course that's a secret garden, isn't it? I know I said I'm leaving off there, I promise I'm just going to add one last detail to the side. So I'm taking a glue stick and adding a little glue all across there. And I want to add some white glitter. So I've been thinking and I think that I'm going to leave this, like not touch it too much because I don't want it to give a clue as to what's inside, I want it just to look like it's a normal door and then when you open it, like you've got a hidden secret world there and you've also got this side to enjoy. So as I mentioned, I'm going to keep this quite minimum. I'm just taking this little look and I'm going to hot glue that onto there and then I'm also taking this golden leaf. I'm going to change the colour because that looks way too shiny. I'm just going to use one of my sharpies to go over it and then using some hot glue we're just going to stick it onto the door and I think I'm going to put it on the top of the door rather than the center like this just in the center there all right so we are working on the inside and I'm taking these berries they are stickers but you can just print some out and add some glitter to the wings if you like now she is far too tall, I mean I thought she would fit because I've got a bigger one here but unfortunately she does not fit so what I'm going to have to do is actually cut off her legs I know it's sad but you know she's got to fit in here somehow and then to make it look a little bit more natural we're going to cover this area here with moss so that you know she looks like she's just sitting down instead of having her legs chopped off What you have to remember is also that we're going to be able to see through here so if we stick this down like this no sorry like this 
you're going to all of this and we really do not want that so I've got another girl here and I'm going to do the same thing cut her so that she can fit in there nicely so I'm going to stick one down this side first so that when you're looking you can see the fairy and it's really nice and then I'm going to stick this fairy this side as well So I've worked on both of the girls for either side. There is going to be a little, that you can see there, you can see a little bit of the card still or the paper that the fairies are on, but you know, there's not much I can do with the rest, I've tried my best. So now I'm just going to take some more reindeer moss and now I'm going to stick it inside and just basically make it all look pretty so that it looks like a little secret fairy world inside. Now I've finished adding all of my masks, I'm going to start adding in some paper flowers. Finally, I'm going to be taking these small wooden embellishment stars and I'm going to be colouring them in using my Arteza markers. I've also decided to add one of the moons to the door. I was debating where to add it and I finally found the perfect place. So I'm just going to colour that silver and then stick it on with my hot glue. And as you can see, these markers work really, really well. They're in the description box if you want them. So we went from this to this. I know I've been making a lot of functional home decor lately but I still believe you need that little bit of magic in your life. And here's the back with the little door. I love that lock on there. And then once you open it up, you reveal the secret garden inside. How precious is it? I feel like a little piece of me is in this project. I'm going to take one of these and it comes with a lid and a straw so I've just removed those. And then I'm also using some string. I almost forgot what it was called then and one of the spoons they come in a pack of three for a pound so you go and start with your string and you can use normal twine add some glue you just want to get rid of this neck that's showing so i'm going to cover it with this string and you're just going to wrap it around after you stick it down to the base Okay, so here it is all covered now. You want to take some paint and you might have to mix the colour up so that it looks like honey and we're just going to drizzle it down all across this little pot. And if you're having trouble with this, another way to do it is to take your hot glue. That way you've got a little bit more control of how you want the design. And then you just go over it with a little bit of paint. see that looks so much better than one that I did with the paint alone. Now I'm just going to start adding the paint on top of the hot glue. Once you've done that you're going to take your spoon and just insert it inside and it's up to you if you want to add a little hot glue so that it's nice and secure or just go without. I think I might add a little. Now you're going to bring back the lid without the straw and you want to keep it at an angle and we want to hot glue it to the spoon and just to the edge there. They sell these in Poundland and I thought it would be really nice to add Winnie the Pooh's head maybe on the centre here just to break up some of that colour and shine. I'm going 
going to add some twine to the handle again just to break up the colour and so that we can coordinate with his head because it's kind of the same colour isn't it so just adding some hot glue and then we'll wind a little around that just adding some final detail here using some off cut flowers from other projects I'm just going to stick that to the handle and I feel like that also breaks up some of that gold I actually have these honey coloured hot glue sticks and they're really nice for making fake honey I just decided to do it this way instead this time just in case you don't have those Right, moving on to the second DIY we're going to take one of these I think they're called let me just have a look tile stickers peel and stick tiles so I've got one of these and I'm just going to remove this part here and then what you want to do is basically paint it so that it looks like the honeycomb and it matches the first DIY so again I am just using gold to do this I'm actually going to use my sponge brush to dab this on While that's drying you want to take a pound and canvas and this is optional but I'm just going to prime it with some white gesso. You can use white acrylic paint if you like. So as you saw I didn't paint the centre and that's because we're going to stick this on there so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm impatient but I do suggest leaving that to dry before you take this and stick it on. You're just going to peel this away and add it just to the centre. Now you're going to grab these letters from the works and they fit perfectly. It's up to you if you want to leave it as it is, plain, or you can colour them in using any sharpie pens. I'm going to colour it with this black one just so that it can stand out a little bit more. Now I'm simply using these because I don't trust my own handwriting so if you do then you can go ahead and do that or you can even use a Cricut if you have one. I think that's such a lovely contrast so you can see the difference there. I think I should have used my Cricut for this, it certainly would have been faster. Now I've finally got all of the letters so I'm just going to hot glue them in place. This is what it's like crafting with two cats. <laughs> I'm going to be really brave and just draw like, it's kind of like a spring, you know, to show that something's moving or flying. And yeah, I'm just going to freehand this. I did try to do it with a pencil first, but I just couldn't see it. So I'm just going to have to go straight in with the Sharpie. Now I'm taking these little bees. I got them off eBay. And I'm just going to add some hot glue because like that does not stick at all. And then we'll just add it to that bit there. So here's the second DIY. I'm really glad that I coloured in the letters because I think it just wouldn't have looked right otherwise. And that the spiral came out okay. For the next DIY you're going to be taking one of these glasses from Poundland and you're going to turn it upside down you're also going to take their twine and what we're going to do is hot glue it to this glass and just keep winding it and we might need to use more hot glue as we go but we'll see Just reaching the top now, so I'm adding hot glue until I finish 
the rest of the class, which I actually have used all of the twine up. Hopefully I can finish it with what's left. If not, I think I've got some more in my stash. I've got so much hot glue on my fingers as well. Let me just peel them up because they're getting in the way a little bit. Be careful not to get burnt doing this. The amount of times I've got burnt with hot glue. Ouch. Okay, there's another one. And then with the excess, I'm just going to add a little glue to the end. So you're going to take a thicker twine rope. So that one's more like string, this one is, I'd say, more rope. And we want to create a circle. So I'm just seeing how big I want the circle. I think a little bit smaller than that. I think that looks about right. So then you're going to cut it. And then we're going to glue it together to form the circle. Then we're going to glue it in the centre. These glue strings if you've got a hack for that please do tell me because it drive me crazy okay so we're just going to glue that down now all right and then once you've done that you want to take your black sharpie pound and do these and then you want to color the inside let me just cut some of that off yeah color the inside so that it's all black i'm just going to clean it up a bit i have seen people like clean the twine up with fire but that really scares me i feel like i don't know if i could do that i don't know i keep feeling like it's just gonna catch a light again i'm going to add some hot glue to this dripping now i'm just coloring the honey again this time i'm not doing it with paint i'm just using a marker Then I'm adding these two flowers, which are from Poundland, just on the side there. Doesn't that look pretty? <laughs> That's a mix between pretty and beautiful for you there. And then, just seeing where this goes, I think that would look really nice there. So again, just adding some hot glue to that. And here's today's final DIY. I just think it's so cute and pretty. I really do love all of them. So I'm going to start by removing all of these, the bamboo sticks that are inside. And now for these bits, you're going to need some pliers. And what you want to do is just wedge it in the corner. And then with a little bit of force, you just push on it and it will come out. So I've done this one already. Now I'm just going to do this one. Next I'm just going to give it a coat of paint and I'm using this Wilco tester pot. I don't want it to be plain white so that's why I'm going with this colour here. And because this colour is so bright you might need a few coats Okay, this is nice and dry now and I'm going to start working on the roof. To do this I'm just going to go as natural as possible in this project because that really matches the whimsical fairy kind of creations. So I've got some moss here and I've just collected this from my garden. I store it in this big pot and I just keep this in the bathroom and water it and maintain it. So I'm going to start with that just taking my hot glue and I'm going to stick the moss directly on the roof. And you're going to make sure to add glue and moss on these sides as well. 
And if you got it from the garden or the park, like me, just separate the soil from it. So now I'm just breaking up pieces of bark and this was from the park so just like this and then I'm going to attach them to the top of the roof on top of the moss using my hot glue. Next we're going to cover these sides here again using some bark so I've just cut it kind of like just breaking it really to size. And then again, we're just going to add some hot glue to stick that on. So this one lengthwise is good, but it's obviously too big. So I'm just cutting it. And I think that will do. Just the bottom. And just sticking that down. Once you've finished the front, turn it to the side and then we're going to start working here. Again, just filling it with some bark. So just hot glue it in place and if you've got little gaps like that, you can break them to fit it or you can just add some moss. This is kind of like doing a jigsaw, you're fitting all the pieces together. Okay, so you can see I've done that as much as I could. Now I've got some little empty gaps, so I'm just going to take some moss to fill those in. I'm starting on the other side now, and it kind of helps if you've got bigger pieces like this. It's just easy to stick down and you don't have to, you know, play around with so many little pieces. So the last side is done. Again, just taking my mask and filling those holes in. Okay, now we're going to start working on this side here. So you can use cardboard, I usually do, and wood, but I'm kind of just trying to go with something a little bit more high-end, just so that it can match the whole creation. So I've got this balsa wood, it's really thin, and that's why I love using it for projects, because I can cut it and just, you know, kind of get it to fit into my projects a little bit more easier without having to use machinery. So what I'm going to do is try to... Basically, cut these to size and stick them so that I can cover this area. But I'm also going to be cutting little windows and a door, so hopefully it all works out. I'm just taking my pencil and kind of just doing a rough drawer out of where I need to cut. So I've done that and now I'm just going to stick the two together, just taking my hot glue adding a few dots down the side. Now I'm just taking my scissors, you see why I love this wood? <laughs> I can just literally cut it. So I've almost got it to fit but now I'm just going to draw how big I want my door and where I want it so that I know how much to cut. Now doing the same for the window, so I've done one there going to draw the next so now I'm ready to start cutting those out as well I use the smaller scissors for the intricate areas like around the corners because this can just split so you have to be really careful with it 
my craft table is not a mess right now but I think I'm just going to add a little chimney I thought that would be super cute and I'm just using one of the bamboos that came inside the insect box to do this just take your hot glue and add it on to the side you can cut it if you want but I think that that's a decent size I'm just gonna add a little brown to it because I feel like it looks kind of like too new almost and I'm just doing that with a little bit of um, some RTs of water paints or watercolour paints that's perfect now that's the right colour I'm gonna take some of this toy stuffing pan and also do this and this is just going to mimic some steam coming out of the chimney so we're just going to hot glue that in So next I went on to the internet and I've got a lovely fairy background here and this is just printed onto some paper and you do want it on paper because card will be too heavy to work with. So I'm going to cut this to size and I'm also going to be using some Mud Podge to stick it down and then I'm going to go over it with the glass Mud Podge just so that it, so that it can bring out the colours. I just find that that really gives it a nice finish. So we're going to start by adding some Mod Podge to the inside of the walls everywhere including the backing and the bottom. And now I'm going to stuff the image in and just see how much it covers from the roof to the sides, the back and the bottom. I'm not too worried about this little area here that's not covered because when it's upright like this you're not going to be able to see it and as you can see that just looks so beautiful. I'm going to go over it now with some Mud Podge. I'm just going to add some glitter in while it's wet. Okay, I've gone back to working on the front now, so as you can see this just <laughs> looks a mess right now. But don't worry, this is just a template, that's why I was saying you can use cardboard. So let me just bring back the door. So I'm going to glue the door at an angle so that it looks like it's kind of opening a little. As you can see I've got more bark here, what you want to do is just take some bits up like we did before and then again kind of like jigsaw puzzle it, adding little bits with hot glue until you completely cover it. I'm going to go in with my watercolour Arteza paints again. This is because I want to make it the same colour as the bark in case when I do stick down the bark that there's some spots that you might be able to see or anything. Now I'm going to start adding in the bark, just gluing them again with my hot glue. Just adding some dried plants that I actually got from last year so I'm just sticking them with hot glue on the sides of my house just to add some colour. I'm taking this little bead to add as the doorknob for the door and I'm just going to colour that in with bronze. This is the Sharpie pens. Take your hot glue and you're going to stick it onto the door. Cute is that? <laughs> now we're going to take the front of the house, turn it around and then add hot glue at the base so that we can stick it on to the house. As you can see this already has a backing on originally with the insect house so you don't need to stick anything on there and you can just hang this on your wall. So just in case you forgot this was the before. So we'll let you have a look at how the house looks now and I'll show you an optional step just to make it even more magical. The steam isn't showing, there you go. I added a few dried flowers here just to finish off. 
And that's how the sides look. And then inside, it kind of looks like a face, doesn't it? <laughs> and then if you like, you can add some tea lights in there, or fairy lights, whatever you like. You can just slip this through the door. And I've also got this fairy figurine, just showing you a few options here. You can place her inside, so that it looks something like this. If you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button for more creative budget DIYs. So for our first DIY, we're basically going to be giving this a little bit of a transformation, make it look more high-end. To do this, you're just going to need £2-land items, so this is just going to cost you £2, or just over £2. This here, from the artificial plant section, and then this mirror, you're also going to need a belt. So I've got this old belt. That I'm just going to make use of. So place it on top of your mirror and measure how long you want it because we're going to cut it this is way too long obviously. So I'm just adding it to the mirror and I think I'm going to cut it around here and to make this extra secure because we are going to be hanging it you want to take a stronger adhesive I am going to be using a combination of hot glue and this one here so you can take some super glue we want to add it to the bottom here and then on the other side as well and then also taking my hot glue so I'm just going to stick it on first, try to centre it, and just hold it down for some time. And then we're going to do the same for the other side. And you want to make sure that it's matching the other side. Now you don't have to add glue all the way here because when you hang it, it goes taut anyway. So you can totally leave off here if you really like it nice and simple but if you want to decorate it a little bit more then you can go ahead and just do that. So I'm just taking these and we're going to add them on the side here. You want to take your Poundland pliers and then we're going to snip it off right at the bottom. So I've just taken a little bit of hot glue and added it there and then work out how you want to style it. These do move, they've got like wires so you can style them how you like. And I'm just going to carry on gluing them to the side of the mirror. And as simple as that, the first DIY is completed. It wasn't that really quick, but look at how expensive it looks. For the second DIY, you're going to take one of these from Poundland. And then we're going to get rid of this part here, so just cut it off. The other thing you're going to need from Poundland are these. They come in a set of three. So you can leave the background plain, this one here. But I think I'm going to add a little detail to it using some of my washi tapes. And they're just great to decorate something really quick and easy. Look at that. So I'm just adding it to the bottom. Honestly, so happy with this swatch of tape. Look at how beautiful it is. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I am going to be taking these handles. They're really cheap. You get a small pack from Wilco. I can't remember what it was, but it was a few pence. And I'm just going to paint them first. I'm going to choose a darker colour. So I'm using my Arteza paints. You can use the Poundland ones, but if you do want to use Arteza, the link is in the description box. They are really, really good quality and I definitely recommend them. I'm just adding a little bit more detail, kind of like staining it. Now I don't have any stains, so what I do is I take a little bit of paint on a baby wipe and then I just kind of do this and um, like rub it in on the surface. 
it gives it a really nice distressed look and look at how much more expensive that looks now so I'm just going to move on to my next painting job while these dry so you can leave these white if you like I'm just going to add some colour to them so first you're going to remove these and if it's stuck like this don't worry about it because that will be covered anyway so I'm just going to do the same for all the other two so I think I'm going to go with two black and then my third one I'm going to have in the middle and I'm going to be using this colour here and I am using my sponge brush to do this because I feel like it applies paint better and more evenly and also covers the surface quickly as you can see I sometimes like when I'm using the paintbrush you'll have the paint paint brush strokes and I also like the texture that this gives now you don't have to paint the inside just make sure that you go over the edges a little in case that does show but we're going to be covering the inside with some plants and gravel anyway now I'm just going to paint my final one so again just taking my sponge brush look at what beautiful colour that is reminds me of the terracotta uh, pots so everything is nice and dry now and I'm really happy with the paint job I'm going to take the handles and I'm going to just glue them on either side so that we've got a really nice tray and now if you want to make this actually like really strong then don't just use hot glue but this is just for decorative purposes so I'm fine with just using this now you can fill this up with sand you can fill it up with a floral foam brick and then just add some moss on top or just sand on its own with some succulents or you can fill it with some stones like gravel I've just got this from Ikea so I'm just going to fill it up with that and then Poundland sells some succulents these are different ones I have already but they do sell a few there so you can pick them up and then just add them in the centre So here's the second DIY completed. I'm really happy with this. I think it looks trendy, so high-end, and I really love the colour combination as well. For the third DIY, you want to take one of these picture frames from Poundland, and then they've also got the netting in the garden section. So I've got this, and I've just cut some a little piece off so I think I'm going to have to trim it a little bit more but what you want to do is just remove the backing from the photo frame and the glass because you're not going to need that you're also going to get rid of these clips with these pliers again from Poundland so I'm just going to take my hot glue and add it to the sides of the frame all across so that we can stick down this to this. Now you're going to need some twine from Poundland and a bottle. They do little jars but I only had a set of two. Initially I actually wanted to use three so like one here, two and three but I just don't have enough so I'm going to have to use just one. So you want to place your twine inside the chicken wire and then you're going to take your bottle and place it in the centre if you're just using one. If you're using three then you can just place one either side and then you're going to tie it around the neck of the bottle so that we basically hold it in place with some of this twine I'm going to tie a knot make sure it's really nice and tight just tie it again then I'm going to cut it now I'm just going to add a little bow this is pre-made I got like a pack of multicoloured ones for a few pounds off eBay because I really am so bad at making bows. So 
so there we go that's just perfect and now you're just going to add your flowers so you can take some artificial ones from Poundland they don't do that many so I think I might have to improvise a little bit and use a bit for my stash so this is what I found I think I got this from Wilco I'm just going to cut it I think that's actually is that wire yeah I'm going to need pliers for that so I'm going to cut it a little bit so I can fit it in because it's a little bit too long at the moment and so this is today's final project we're going to be making like a mix between a chandelier a wind chime and a dream catcher so you're going to turn your sandwich tin this way around and then I'm taking this ring, it's from my jewellery making set and I'm going to just glue it in the centre so we've got something to hold it up with. Next you're going to take the sticky gems from Poundland and you're going to add them all across, just in the centre. I promise you this won't look tacky once we're done. So just keep doing that, keep adding them until you finish the entire thing. So I'm just going to fast forward this process for you so you don't have to get bored watching. Poundland do some spray paints, you've got some different colours, like this one is white, you've got a silver one as well. So I'm going to go and spray paint this outside using the silver spray paint. Make sure that you do all of it, the top and the sides, you don't have to worry about the inside. So I'm back now and this is all dry and spray painted and I went with white in the end. I did do the silver and I really didn't like it. So yeah, I'm definitely happy with this now. The next thing you're going to need are some lights from Poundland. And what I love about these lights is that I always take these off. So basically it's like a two-in-one for me. I use these for projects or decorative purposes and then I use the fairy lights separately. So I'm going to be pulling off all of the hearts from the light. So save your fairy light because we're actually going to use it in this project now. So what you want to do is add some hot glue or double sided tape, actually I don't think that will be strong enough. So some hot glue or maybe even super glue, something pretty strong so that we can stick that inside there. And you've got access to the on and off button. By the way, when you're doing this, make sure that you stick your battery pack right in the center of your pan because I didn't do this I didn't really think of it until after I'd done it so I had to pull it off and readjust it to the center because when you're hanging it it's just going to hang on one side because of the weight so yeah you just want to make sure it's nice and centered so I'm just sticking mine down and then you're going to take your fairy light and we're going to wind it inside the pan this is just so that it, it's basically got another feature which is going to be really cool. You can just turn it on at night and it will be really pretty to see. And for this you're just going to need some tape to stick the fairy lights onto the side of your tin. So I've just finished doing that. And that's how it's going to look. And this is optional, you don't have to have the fairy lights in there. I just really like fairy lights. So now I'm going to take the hearts and I'm going to attach them all the way around using my hot glue. See what I mean by it looking like a chandelier? I really love the light that's coming through. I've got the fairy lights on right now. Now you're going to need a few more pan and lights or you can just leave off there if you like. So again I'm just going to separate it from the fairy lights and then I'm going to save the fairy lights so I can use them in another project. Now I've got them separated, I kind of measured how long I want it. So I counted basically five balls, one, two, three, four, five. And then just before the sixth one starts I'm going to snip it there and then I'm just going to do the same, keep snipping until basically I've cut off as much as I can from this and we'll see how much it basically goes round and fits. So 
So I've got it here in rough. I've basically placed it so that it's every two hearts and then I place a strip if that makes sense. So I'm just going to stick them down now with my hot glue. Next you want to take some of these Poundland butterfly stickers, they also do little purple ones, this is the other ones that they do, and you can leave off here, but I just felt like something was missing, especially in the centre, so I played off camera and I decided I'm going to go with this, this is what looked best out of everything else I tried. So what I'm going to be using is this clear string, and I'm going to be adding a butterfly on the bottom of the string, and just attaching them in the inside, like I think in the center, in between the hearts, so that it dangles nicely down, or rather, so that it dangles nicely. Okay, so just to explain, you see, I've got like this little gap here, that's where I'm going to have the string, and so you're going to turn it this way again. And for your string, hot glue basically doesn't really work this clear string here so all you need is a little bit of sellotape just how we did when we stuck the fairy lights you just need a little bit and then stick it in the center and then we're going to stick it inside so I've just cut the string matching the same length of these and now I'm going to take my butterfly and I'm going to remove these sticky pads because I actually need the glue in the center so I'm going to add a touch of hot glue and then stick it onto the string. Now I only have one pack of these butterflies on me so I do recommend getting two packs because the butterflies turn around and so you want to be able to see the beautiful design on each side otherwise you'll just see the paper so I'm actually going to go in store and get another pack so that I can add them to the back. So i just finished adding all of the butterflies with this string off camera and now I'll show you how it looks. So we started with this and ended up with this. How pretty is it? This is definitely one of my favourite Poundland DIYs to date and it only cost me around 2 or £3 to make. I had a lot of the things already but if you have nothing it will probably cost you £5. And this is how it looks at night. Isn't it just so calming, serene and peaceful? I'm starting off with this. I did want a lantern but I didn't have one so this is from Ikea but I do really love it and I haven't got to use it so this is going to be perfect. Then I have a piece of bark that I got from the park and I've used this just to make sure, I've cut off pieces just to make sure that it can fit inside my container. So it fits this way. And then we're going to be adding moss and things so you won't be able to see these areas anyway. But I'm going to start with this piece here so you can put your lantern to the side. And then what you're going to need is some fairy lights. And these are going to be used as the structure for our mushrooms. So you want to create hoops like this with your fairy lights. And make sure that you have the light there, the head at the top and then twist it so you've got it looking like this then you're going to take your hot glue place a little bit down so that you can glue the fairy light in place and just hold it for a while so it can set you can also use this really for Halloween decor if you don't like the really freaky kind of stuff this is a little bit aesthetic and it works for autumn as well so again I'm making sure that the head is there twisting it and I'm going to make several different mushroom lengths so this one's shorter as you can see then again taking the hot glue and just placing that and you can space them out however you like. And if you don't have enough, you can use another fairy light, so you can have two. Go 
going to move it now to this area here. Just twisting it again. I know they don't look like much right now, <laughs> but I promise you, it looks amazing once you're done. So I'm on my final one now, because my fairy lights end. I think this one I'll put right about there. So this is the first stage and this is how it looks at the moment. Now you want to take your hot glue and go over all of these pieces here. So just dollop it on just to make sure that all of that wire gets covered. And same here. And to do this, you want your hot glue nice and hot so it just melts into place. And let's set this aside to dry. Then you want to get some, like a silicon mat or something like that, just to be able to create some circles with your hot glue. So I'm just going to start, and these are going to be the mushroom heads. You can go as big or as small as you like. I'm going to do a few different sizes again. That's one here. We'll do one over here, smaller one. Just counting how many heads I actually need. One, two, three, four, five. So I've just got one more. And this works best when your hot glue is really hot. So while we wait for the heads to set, we can start decorating and just covering all of this hot glue on the bottom. So you're going to need some moss to do that. I generally use this flat type of moss, which I just get free from the park as well. but. I'm going to go with some reindeer moss because we've got this type of moss already and I just kind of want it to look more mythical almost. So again taking my hot glue and I'm not going to cover the mushrooms, I'm just going to surround the area where the mushrooms are. You've got different types of Moss, but you've also got different colours of moss, so you can get creative, you don't have to stick with the normal green colour. So I'm turning it around just to make sure that I get all of the sides. Have a little bit more hot glue showing there. So I'm going to cover that up as well. Now I really want to go natural for this project, so I'm going to be taking these fern which I have pressed and I always make, make sure to just to tell you how to do it which is really simple. You can do this with flowers as well, you just grab whatever you want from the park, your garden, put it in a book, keep it flat inside a book, in the middle of a book, add some weights if you need and keep it like that for two weeks and this is the result that you'll get. So I'm going to add some of this real fern onto the platform or the base with my hot glue then I'll go with a bigger piece, just gently removing that and we'll add that there. I think I'll go with one final one just at the back because we've got quite a lot of space over here. Again I have some more dried flowers and this really falls in with the fall so I'm happy to use that and we'll place that here. It's coming along now isn't it? 
Let's do another one on this side. I have some beautiful purple pressed flowers that I'm going to add in. I have to be quite delicate with these ones. We're going to be adding the mushroom heads in a moment. So here's the mushroom heads, as you can see they're all set. And I'm using this little tool just to get underneath. So here's one of them. This process is way easier if you use a silicon mat or something. One last one. There we go. Now let's figure, so let's use the smaller heads for the smaller mushrooms. I think the smallest one I have is this one here, so take your hot glue and stick it on. And then another smaller one. That looks better. I think the smaller one looks better there, so again just stick it on in the centre, the larger one here. You can have them at an angle as well, so I'm sticking this one at an angle. And then I have a final one. And this looks really beautiful just as is, but when you turn it on it's really magical. As I was lifting it up I noticed that there's some more wire that's showing. So again, really just take your time, go over it a few times if you need, have a look. You really want to make sure that all the wire is covered. Some weird reason I can't get it back in the container, so I need to chip away at it again. Now I mentioned earlier that I'm going to cover up all of the gaps with some moss, but it really didn't look right. It took away from this focus point. So what I'm going to do instead is add this, which is like soil but it's actually plant grow substrate you don't need this you can use soil you can use moss whatever you like but i just really like the way that it looks so that's why i'm going to be using it you can also add like this which is just pieces that i shaved off the wood the bark so i might even add that and then i might add pieces like this to decorate as well all from the same wood bark Now this is optional but I'm going to add some butterflies. These are from Zadil, I really love using their products. So they come in packs like this and they've got sticky foam cushions as well that you can add to stick them on right here. But I have kind of did this to their wings to make them look 3D and it really does make a difference. I might paint the body as well just so it doesn't look too plastic. But I'm going to add one here with my hot glue on the bottom and then the bigger one I'm going to add to the back here and it still matches my colour schemes that I'm going with, that's why I've chose these two. And you can just add these with hot glue or the foam pads that they come with. I'm just taking my Arteza markers to go over them. With this one here I really like that it's black but I did go over it with a black sharpie pen. It does make a difference. Now how magical does this look? Didn't I tell you it's just so amazing when you turn the lights off? I really love this. I think it's definitely one of my favourites I've ever made. It's just so beautiful. It's definitely got a spot in my heart. This not only makes great decor but something really beautiful and unique to make and sell or give to someone. I have to tell you it's quite addicting making the mushrooms so you definitely have to give it a go honestly i'm going to be making these mushrooms and just incorporating it into so many other projects and this is how it looks with the room light on so it's still beautiful and then of course you can also display it with the led fairy lights off but it just looks so much better with them on if you've enjoyed don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye for now